Hey, welcome back to the Master Fall Grid. My name is Andre. Woof! My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you're all having a good Thursday. It is the 27th. That seems about accurate. How's everyone doing? Thanks so much for dropping by. Today is a pretty big day for Netrunner. Uh, season 6 of Fortnite has just begun. So a lot of new skins to unlock. A lot of uh, stuff to get that XP for. Also, Magic the Gathering beta is now open today. So that's pretty cool. You like cards? None of that shit matters, though. We're playing Netrunner. How's it going, Dumbbreak? Good evening. How you doing? Also, you look like a nail. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday to you as well. Uh, hopefully, you're having a good one. Maybe even for uh, some people who watch this, it's already Friday. Uh, it's been it's been a good week. Had a good week last week. So far, I've been having a pretty good week this week. We got a bunch of Netrunner to do today. Uh, if you don't know, uh, firstly, if you're new around here, what's up? How's it going? I uh, highly recommend you to make an account in either chat. We're on Twitch or YouTube. Ask some questions. Meet some people. Um... I've uh, I picked up recently. I was in Toronto and around the bus station, we're waiting for the bus, and I ended up picking up like a commander deck for Magic. It's like a hundred card deck full of one ofs. It's actually the first Magic product I've ever owned, and I'm excited to try Magic on Sunday. Just casually trying Magic, it's something I always wanted to do. Uh, playing so much like card games, kind of made sense to at least try it at some point. So um. I've been watching a whole lot of content. I've been like YouTubing and trying to figure out how to play Magic because I kind of I think I thought I knew, don't entirely know. And I've spent a lot of time like watching tutorial stuff, and um, I really appreciate that. You know, you see a lot of channels that show cards when you talk about cards, stuff like that. I think we do an okay job here on JNet. Uh, we're gonna try and like hover because you can do that, right? If you hover your 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 cursor over a card, it shows it up full big. We're maybe gonna do a bit more of that. Maybe there's newer players here. Maybe you don't know the whole card pool. I'm also gonna try talk maybe a bit slower. Sayofar, how's it going? Hello there. I don't recognize that name. Thanks so much for dropping by. How are you doing? Also, Raven, what's up? Good morning, where I'm from. Good morning to you too. We got a while out until we can say that properly here, but at least for you, that's okay. I'm beyond burnt out on magic, but it's a pretty fun game before you get to that point. That's the way that I see it so far. Is like there's a huge rabbit hole. I think the competitive scene is probably not for me. It involves a lot of money, a lot of chasing things. But right now, it's just like me and Pat. I think we're playing two pre-constructed commander decks we built. I'm excited to try that out. Yo, Jim, what's up? Andre, Argus, all right. Yeah, this is actually Seamus's undefeated King of Servers deck. And I'm really excited uh, to play it. Do you love me some Argus? Do you love myself some Wayland Kill? Let alone Wayland Kill, Rush, Threat stuff. I'm going to feel right at home. Jardros, what's up? Dear Lord, Andre, do not start magic with commander. Why is that? Why is that? Commander seems so easy. It's like the easiest. It's like un inconsistent. There's a lot of powerful cards. It seems like pretty good. You get 100 cards for whatever. It's like 40 bucks Canadian. That's like three American dollars. Apathy, what's up? How's it going? Doing okay? Hopefully yourself too. How are you doing? It's fun to draft though. Yeah, draft is like the other easy way to get into it. It's just like buy packs, draft, stuff like that. Like there's a lot of, seems like approachable ways. I'm not a, I'm not a magic person though. I've honestly never even played a game. But the beta is out today, so maybe check that out. Mark Andre, what's up? How you doing, man? Where were you in Toronto? I was there for their Tuesday night pub runner this past week. Oh, sweet. Uh, did you make it out to the Rhino? I think it's what they do on Tuesdays. Um, I was around the East Danforth area. Uh, we were celebrating my brother's birthday who lives out there. Got to see my sister, too. Uh, it was nice. We went for dinner. Yeah, pretty cool. Look how far it was to Montreal, but it's pretty far. It's like six, six hours, five and a half hours. It's a bit. It's not something you can just like do on a whim. It takes like, you know, you got to travel each way. Yo, Tataki, how's it going? Woo, Argus. I feel the same way. I'm really excited about this. Also, Chris, what's up? Howdy, y'all. How you doing? Apathy doing good. Commander is an incredibly complicated format that is problematic for experienced Magic players to figure out. It's not a thing you immediately start with. But why is that, Jar Like, I brought a pre-constructed deck, which is, it gives me the most variety of cards, and it seems relatively easy. I got a Planeswalker. I understand how that works now. I don't know. It seems okay. There's a brewery here in town that has a pina colada ale hall right now. It seems in line with the stuff you drink on stream. I actually haven't had beer on stream for a while now. It's been a, it's been a bit, which actually might be us goofing it. I feel, not that I got wasted on stream, but like, you know. Hydration is important. How was the Rhino, actually? I've never been. I'm part of the Torso group on Facebook, so I see that it's like every Tuesday at the Rhino. Pina colada ale. Pina colada ale could be go either way, but aeronaut doesn't make bad beer. So this is 
Seamus modernism, this sort of like Seamus portmanteau with, I think it's mostly modernism, has been around for a long time. Uh, Seamus, mind you, is a Scottish player. I had the pleasure of meeting and actually commentating at Worlds for the first time. You can see him, he commentates a couple games on stream. Really, really strong player. His commentary is absolutely stunning. Super glad to be able to play with him. And he's been playing uh, kind of Kill Rush Wayland all the way back to when I was playing like old Titan Rush decks. There's a lot of old YouTube videos about that sort of stuff. And um, the archetype a lot of people thought got a lot more difficult to play this modernly just because of the existence of uh, Shapers got clone ship back, right? Um, so, and a lot of our Shapers already were playing Misdirection, but it made it a lot harder to get around this card. Uh, and Shapers, some people thought before Worlds that Shaper would be super uh, prevalent. I think a lot of people expected smoke, or there was, might have been a ruse somewhere here, uh, that there was a lot of smoke going on at the top tables. Didn't really work out like that for Worlds, but I think specifically at King of Servers, uh, the way that King of Servers works is that you play teams of four, and on each team, you have to play a different faction on the corpse side. So you have to play all four of the factions. On the runner side, you have to play at least three different factions. You can play two of the same faction as long as you play different identities, because not everyone has the mini factions, which are also playable. So the chance of you running into, like, Shaper, 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 Shaper was unrealistic, and this has a fun matchup against Valencia as well. Uh, these decks also kind of disappeared for a bit recently um, due to the existence of Clan Vengeance in combination with Zero. And now that Zero got banned from the game, they seem like a lot more playable. And the basic idea here is you actually are going to score out to 7 in a majority of your games. And if they don't respect you, you help kill them with hard-hitting news. And you also have Economic Warfare, which makes it hard to clear all the tags. A lot of times in this matchup, you're actually hard hitting new someone just to give them the eight tags, even if they can clear them. Because spending their whole turn clearing eight tags is kind of shitty. And Data Raven right now is also such a good ice. Not a lot of people playing Hunting Grounds. It's it's real shitty to break this with MK Ultra. So a lot of times you have to trace. Just really, really strong. Also, huge shout outs to how good this card is. Man, this card is absolutely nuts. I love this card. And this deck also runs IPO, which is wild. Um, so big money. Play some big money. Been deck building for Arkham while watching your stream. How's that going? You're on. I forget who you're playing. I think you're playing Leo. I may be wrong. So we're going to jam some games here. Uh, generally pretty fun. The agenda suite has largely been unchanged for Wayland Rush decks for the last maybe like two years in Netrunner, which is wild. Uh, we did get some new, like, meat damage y based uh, agendas. There's a 4 2 that just came out in the last Rain and Reverie, but not a lot has changed here. Oaktown. Oh, actually, no, sometimes th this suite has changed a bit. Some people would play three Oaktown and then not play any three-pointers, but Global Food Initiative seems pretty good right now, especially because less people are playing Mad Dash because it's restricted. Jason, what's up? Hey, Andre, 2 a.m. here in the UK. Can't sleep. How's it going? It's going okay. Sorry that you can't sleep. Uh, we're in for a night in Netrunner. We're going to be actually building some decks. We have some, like, pretty wild decks. Uh, last week, the stream kind of goofed up a bit on, on YouTube. It's, like, three different videos, which makes it a lot harder to watch, but if you haven't checked it out, like... I know it's a bit more difficult to watch, but check it out. Uh, we got a tip from Henrik Larsson sent in an email. We built actually like a really competent, um, really strange, competent uh, corp deck. And I'm hoping to replicate that same sort of success today with another wild corp deck. We'll try it out. Seamus Modernism. Uh, Argus. Security. This ability also was really bad back in the day. Uh when uh clan finishes is around and i think the large way that you play against argus and i don't i still see people mess this up i think i was playing against system outage uh at worlds just like we're playing casual games and he kept dying he was playing like pawn shop Haley with misdirection which should be a pretty bad matchup but he kept like i think we played two games in a row maybe it was just one game and he always got like buried by tags and like a more trappy version of argus and my like feedback after that game against him was specifically just always take the meat damage it almost never matters, right? Like the tag, you have to clear that. It costs two credits. The meat damage doesn't change much. Specifically in this matchup, the only difference with the meat damage makes is if you end your turn with like a single tag. Because then the amount of tags you have actually matters with cards like high profile target. Which is only a two of in this deck, mind you. No boom. So always just take the meat damage. It doesn't fucking matter. Also Michigan Master, how's it going? I played a mainly kill tight in a KOS and went up against three shapers with both misdirections and clot. Yeah, that's going to happen. I wasn't popular at that tournament, but uh, this seemed to be doing okay. Also, Twitch chat, what's up? Conjures Games, how's it going? Hey, Andre, hyped to watch some games tonight. Thanks so much for dropping by. I don't recognize that name. How you doing? Sorry, I, I, I talked for a bit. I kind of ignored the chat. There's 24 games tonight, actually. That's pretty good. It's, I haven't seen it that good in a while. 
Benny's latest video has Sanjay on talking about how good Just Minder is right now and he wants me to give it a try. Yeah, I've seen some cool Just Minder decks. I think people are realizing that Hot Pursuit is a really good card. It's also not the worst, like, meta call. There's a lot of tagging ice. I, I, I think Just Minder, it was, like, on the list of... Yeah, we'll keep this. On the list of cards that um I was considering building decks around recently. We built two Corp decks in the last two weeks, though. Maybe we're wrong. Commander is more complicated than regular magic because of the cards, especially in the pre-constructed commander decks. Their cards are way more convoluted. They're super convoluted. I'm playing an artifact deck. It's like absolutely wild. We're like a bit zoomed in here. Also, yo, what up? Vincent, how you doing? What's up, man? It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a while. Jim says, has JNet implemented border control? I think they've implemented, we have, mind you, border control, a really strong new card uh, from the Magnum Opus. It's one of the decks. It was a card designed by Chris Dyer. Thanks, you too. I honestly think it might be too good. In this deck, not so much. Um, it's okay in this deck. It's better in, in, in uh, Glacier. I haven't played any Star Wars Destiny. I don't like dice that much. Dice actually frustrate me. Um, all right, we're playing against Smoke, so R&D pressure is a real thing. Getting out an Atlas early was really good. Now, I think we're actually just going to get an Atlas out early. It seems pretty good. We're pretty far away from the IPO. Hopefully we get a too big to fail at the top. But if you score an Alice, you're in an okay spot. Wait, I'm playing like I'm Titan, which can't be right. And we can always go ahead and ice R&D so they don't index us. Even if they index us turn one, like if they don't have Gamble Dirty Laundry and they go to interact with us, like we always can consult for hardening news for five credits. Let me move my face, excuse me. It's a relatively slow start. Like going down to zero credits, they'll be on four next turn. It's hard for them to interact with us. I think honestly we could install this Maybe even naked advance this one to take a credit. Like, I want to over-advance this. The over-advanced Atlas is obviously the best Atlas. We could even, like, put a mouseless. Like, we could mouseless protect this credit. That's a weird turn, but I think this fires. It lets us IPO and then advance this maybe once. Depends what actually we draw. But Rashida's also super good in this matchup on the basis that she draws you into. We need to find Econ Warfares and stuff like that. Tried it with friends once or twice. It's okay, it didn't really grab me. I was worried about the dice, but a lot of games is manipulation and dice changing. That's what I've seen, right? Like, Ashes is another game that's also dice-based like that. But that game has a really interesting, like, dice manipulation thing, so it's not just like you rolled poorly. You can roll poorly, though. Poorly though. And they're definitely on misdirection, mind you. Sorry to be all over the place. So misdirection, they can get with the self-modifying code, which means that they can remove tags. So you have to go a bit fast. And the thing is you have to, that's a terrible Rashida. Oh, that's real bad. So if we advance this once, we go down to eight. And then we can't do ice it and IPO. Now they're going to start their next turn on, uh, what, nine credits. If they want to install their self-modifying code to install their paperclip to break, it's going to be six credits. And then they have to take a tag or trace. It's also really awkward because we can't do advanced, advanced credit. HQ being open is terrible. And I think generally after people Rashida, you want to run HQ. So we're going to try and do everything. Now, mind you, we're going down to almost entirely agendas in hand, but... Two remotes feel strong? It doesn't feel great. I, 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 A, A, the Oaktown, let them steal it. Yo, what's up, Errant? I don't think that's terrible either. And Mouseless doesn't keep them out, but it's actually like a pretty legitimate tax. Atlas with the counter seems pretty good, and it looks like they might just want to take a bit to set up. And the fact that they're not interacting with us is great. So I think we're just going to get Alice with the counter. This represents largely Econ Warfare. Again, we have to play around Misdirection, uh, which they're no longer threatening considering they have a self mod. Oh, actually, no, they are. Self-modifying code still on the table. I think here we can install Advance, Advance this. And this costs like four plus, you know, one of these to get through. And this one a bit more. So here they're running HQ. Makes a lot of sense. We have a lot of agendas in here. And I think we res the Mouseless. They need to install the Refractor. They need a boost and then break through subroutines. Like Mouseless is actually really well positioned against both the Refractor and Houdini. Now, I think they're generally on Refractor, but still pretty good. Were they a threat to run at zero? No. This is also good, mind you, because if they don't install a clone chip or have one in hand, or even another self-modifying code is probably acceptable, is that we can threaten a hard-hitting news with this Atlas counter. Because they have to actually clear the tags. And Refractor's coming down. They boost. Mind you, they don't have to break all three subroutines on the mouse list. And we're never going to over-advance it, are we? They could give us a credit if they wanted to. Looks like they're not. Get a single axis here. So again, meat damage or tag. I think you almost always take the meat damage. Please get the food. They got the food. That's pretty good for us. Not on an agenda we look to score in the early game. And we kind of threaten exchange of information to some extent. And here they got to decide between the Argus meat damage or the tag. 
Data Raven's also really good. Like, the smoke deck doesn't have a good way of dealing with that. Uh, if their only tag card is Misdirection, that works better with multiple tags. So if they have to clear one tag to go through a Data Raven, it's pretty great. And specifically now, they took the meat damage, just like I said. I think it's always the best. And they lost Clone Chip. And, uh... Clone Chip. Turning Wheel is also really important, but Clone Chip is huge. Because that means that they can't Clone Chip into... Harder Kitty News. And this is Border Control. This card is not implemented, I don't think, but it is a barrier. Costs 4 to res. Actually has some pretty relevant subroutines. Hell yeah, we jam Border Control. Let's see what this does. Two servers seems bad. So Border Control says that when they hit it, the first subroutine is gain credits for as many ice on the server. So basically we res it for two if they don't break it. And the second subroutine says... Uh, Beth is pretty good. Um, the second subroutine says... Uh, they're not threatening Claude on this. If we give them this, they give a bad pub, though. This actually is really big because it helps us win the game. Because if we score this and score this, then we can just always audacity, fast track for audacity to win this one. So the question is whether we leave the Oak Town or not. This gives us more money to threaten the kill. And they need, only need one breaker to get through this, but they have to run through it a couple times. So we can always trash the border control. I actually like the hostel. I do. Border control works on run on any server. Uh, no, it has to be the server that they're running on, Raven. Any server would be like super busted. It has to be at that specific server. All right. We'll score this. Gives them a bad pub, but it gets us out of a hand. It also makes it look like that might be the only agenda in HQ. It's pretty, pretty hard. So now if they don't run this, we can maybe win in two turns. And they need to find either their Barrier Breaker. Uh, they also, there's a real threat here with Archer. And now this deck does generally run two to three clone chips. So like, even if they lose one of their programs, they have a chance of getting them back with a clone chip. But it's not something they want to do. And install them daily cast means they probably won't interact with us. So we're actually on game point next turn. And that's a really good recovery card. So if they can't throw it in a clot and they don't get this Archer or this Atlas from hand, we can fast track out with the Audacity. Uh, generally, also, these lists don't have copies. Oh, there you have this self-modifying code, so. Okay, so this might be a bit more difficult. Now, they're at a crossroads here, right? If they use their self-modifying code to run the server, then they can't use it. Oh, psych testing's that's pretty good. Money does matter in this matchup. Obviously, it would be nicer to have the mouse list on archives. So is this deck on clot? Could be. The thing is, if they're on clot, they use their self-modifying code to go get their clot, so the chance of them getting a barrier breaker is a lot lower, so I don't think it's a wrong play no matter what. So we're going to go for it. We're going to ask for an action. Now, they don't know that we don't have it in hand, Audacity, so they have to use their self-modifying code right away, which means that we don't actually have to use their Atlas token. Right? Because if we have it in hand, we win. If we had the Audacity. And they could say no here, and we'd still have to get the Atlas to get the Audacity, and then they could react to it. But in theory, they have to get it here. Yeah, you see? Yeah, I think I have to. So now they don't have a Barrier Breaker. The Clot is on the table. And um, I don't know what we do here. Advancing it once more time changes nothing. Uh, if we advance this once more time, if their Barrier Breaker is Paperclip, it changes, doesn't change the strength. So the best I guess we could do is play Hedge Fund, but that actually gives them an extra click so that they can Beth. The best thing we would possibly do is put an Ice on Archives, which we don't have. They didn't run last turn, so we can't Consulting Visit into Hard Any News, so I think we're just going to click for credit. It's going to give them a free card draw, which sucks, but we have no way around that. If we were on 10 credits, we'd consider advancing like an Ice Wall just to go to 9 so they don't draw a card with Beth. And Clo Chip's coming down. Running Archives. So they have two clicks left, so actually the Border Control might become relevant here. If they run this last click on the server, it's entirely safe. Paragon Gun of Fire on top of the, the security testing. That's a three credit run, four credits by boosting the Netmarker combo, which they actually didn't do. So maybe they think they need things for... Okay, we won. Uh, they might not know Border Control is here. So this is not implemented. I think this is a legal card, right? So we can just trash this to end the run. So Border Control actually wins this the game here. Uh, this card doesn't have art on it. Let's pull it up. It's 
Some people might be ex no expect. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll pull it up. What does it say? Uh, there it is. So this one's not implemented. It's a new card. It was. We don't have the art on this one either. It says end trash to end the run. Only use it on a, this ability during a run on this server. And then two subroutines. Both of them are pretty good. It's only one strength, so it's kind of like Kakugo for the res one strength, but the ability is pretty relevant. So I'm, I'm gonna just go trash it. Actually, no, they can go ahead and install their shit. I guess it doesn't matter either way. Break. I'll just trash it to end the run. The thing is, like, I'm not 100% clear on the legality of this card, so I feel like some people are gonna be upset when they lose to a card that they don't know how to play around. And that actually is a hard card to play around. It's 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 pretty relevant. We'll play. <laughs> good night. Hey, good night, Jason. So we're gonna go and just throw it out to end the run. That should end the run. We can also let let it fired, obviously, to get any credits. All right, and that's the game. Cool. Good economic warfare for BM. Not at all necessary. Hey, good game. Border control really strong, and even in any like deck like this, it's pretty good. Um, a lot of times these decks. A lot of times these decks, like even when it comes down to like the outfit, decks where like the runner has say three, maybe three, four bad pub. And when you have, <laughs> Sans says always BM. And when you have like shitty barriers like Ice Wall, they largely don't matter in the mid to late game. It just basically says come find your factor and return. And the fact that we do have a relatively, ex like not inex unexpensive ice, sometimes it's only three to res when they hit it and it fires, which is not bad at all. Uh, it's still a relevant card because even if in the mid game where it's useless because the runner breaks it for free You can always like surprise res it on a run in R&D when they're about to like turning wheel or maker's eye and That means that they can't use all their turning wheel tokens It means you can stop an indexing and an account siphon or a diversion of funds as it is modernly But like really relevant just because a lot of this ice on this deck uh, Not like mouse it's not like data raven like ice wall specifically don't matter in the late game. That's really cool Four very conditional Nisa counter is pretty good. Yo, what up, Philip? It's like super good. And I wish I put this in my King of Servers deck. Uh, I didn't because I didn't have the card and I was kind of too lazy to proxy, but it's definitely like a very, very, very easy swap. Huge card. Really good with Thimble Rig. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. It lets you reposition it. So you'd be like, oh, wait, I want to put it on the remote server. Um, the thing why I think that ice is a bit busted, perhaps, and I'm actually pretty scared about it. Is that in decks like Mitimakundo, where you can install it on the remote during a run, that's obviously disgusting compared with Nisei tokens and other defensive upgrades. But on top of that, you could pair that with um, even like you don't need that sort of flashy stuff. Like I played against a White Blades at Worlds at King of Servers, and they were just playing like a big Glacier uh, Blue Sun deck. And it came down to you'd have to run the remote that had like five good ice on it, and at any point, probably after you broke five ice, they would just say end the run and you have to do it again. And that's untenable. Uh, that's just really, 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 really difficult. They pass the rig, you switch with border control and pop to end the run on any server. Yeah, that's super fucking cool. Holy shit, that's cool. It's three influence, which is probably well costed. Maybe there's an argument to make it four. If it's four, you probably don't see it out of faction. Maybe a one of in like Mati decks with thimble rig and all that stuff. But uh, it's really good. And the thing is about this card is there's specifically not a lot of counterplay to it. The only counterplay to this card are, um, hey, hey, um, are cards that don't see a lot of play that might actually need to see more play if, them, if this gets really popular. And that is the D res cards. Cards like Ankuza become pretty reasonable. This is actually one of the only hard counters to this. Uh, and also on top of that, the bird, uh, Saker, that lets you D res. Like those are the only two good counters to this card. Is maybe I'm missing something? Apathy says Saker in chat. Yeah. Oh, cool. This is a good matchup. I think. No, maybe not. <laughs> Thanks, you too. This is a good hand though. Despite the trace, this card's still good. They're probably on Citadel Sanctuary. This ice is great. Rashida is great. This is great. We'll keep this. Maybe an agenda early would be good. But Sunny's generally pretty slow, so we have to go as fast as we possibly can. d -Rose doesn't counter because they can pop it before encounter. They can, but then they can pop it. Like, that means that they're popping it maybe at an inopportune time. Right? That means if they put it in the inside of the remote, you're right, that they could pop it immediately. At least then you don't have to break it. But, like, if it's just on a server, it's like using a Nisei counter to stop a forked or something. Like, sure, they did stop the run, but you got them. All right, we got a couple openings here. We could just go ahead and jam the Oak Town. Feeling pretty good. R and D pressure generally from Sunny is deep data mining, which is pretty rough against Argus, and they don't know that we're not on snare. The question is, what do we jam behind? Raven's not that great in this game because they might have Citadel. 
The trace is also not that great. So I think we're just going to go for the hard end of the run. And these are also really good cards if they manage to get in the server. And this is a three card res. Off campus apartment, it looks like we are playing the whole, uh, they might be playing the source, but this is generally what it's been called like what? Halloween party decks. I love this deck. Supplier is pretty slow card, which is pretty good for us. This is probably one of my favorite builds of Sunny. And if you don't know this interaction, when Sunny installs the Earthrise Hotel off of the supplier, the Earthrise Hotel, while it was installed for half price, is not going to fire next turn, which is actually like really, really, really slow. And we have two pretty good ice for the remote server, so we honestly don't have to score this. I don't think we do score this. Yeah, we probably don't even score this. Like, they're going to install this. They have two more credits with the Fall Guy. They're going to go down to two credits. Like, this just seems super safe. Uh, unless they're on some crazy, like, DDoS or... That seems unlikely. They could be on Maxwell James, but they changed how that card works, so don't care. Uh, the question is... Yeah, this is probably worth keeping. Like, we need money. Trace is going to matter at some point. Uh, this is only good on the remote at some point. It could be a bluff, though. I don't think we'd put it anywhere else but the remote. So I think we're just going to put it there. So it looks good. Might help Krim out a bit thanks to their credit denial. Credit denial is also super relevant, but it's it's difficult um, still. Like, Mati decks still manage to res big-ass ice. It's also really good against credit denial, right? This gives us a reason to ice up Centrals. Scrubber actually doesn't do anything in this matchup. But they also might be playing Calling in Favors. I don't actually know if decks do that. All right, I think we can just jam this and get Rashid in there to find more ice because we're pretty good. Actually, I don't even know. I think we might want to ice R&D just a bit. Running HQ is actually worse for us because they get our trashables. But all our agendas in R&D. With Turning Wheel, they might want to run. I don't think they run now when they're at like zero credits. Considering hard hitting these is just way too bad. So I think we're just going to advance this once more. We're going to score it. That was a magnum opus, right? And then just jam her. When this fires, we get generally in, probably two agendas. We'll jam one of them. I love playing Simon with Supplier. Supplier is one of my favorite cards. This they installed for free, but doesn't really matter. They install an off-campus apartment, so they draw. That's cute. And two cards coming in from Earthrise. The thing is that they don't have any burst credits unless they play Calling in Favors, which right now gives them three. They have two on the Fall Guy. We have to go really fast, because this deck is a late-game monster, and we also have to play around the Source, in theory. Which might be the reason they're keeping a Fall Guy around. They also might just be worried about, like... I don't know if an Argus would run it. Global... That's actually a really scary card. So, gotta deal with that. They lose a click, though. Way too slow for a rush deck. It's actually working out for them, though. So if they see the top card of the deck, they can know uh, to run. And then they can get agendas, which means I think we just want to put like something annoying on there. Uh, we could actually just be snap drawing. Like, could we could just be drawing for ice, which might be correct. I mean, for agendas. like We might just want to draw three there and throw out some of this garbage. Uh, I don't know. No tapworm also makes these sort of deck archetypes a lot worse. We're not rushing. Like, the best thing we could have drawn there is agendas. Luckily, we have another Rashida. We're going to draw four more cards. Career fair coming down. That's a cast. Now they're getting three credits at the beginning of the turn. And this is when it gets scary. They're also probably running the supplier. I mean, underworld contacts. Are you serious? Fuck me. Well, we don't want to discard any cards. This is no rush. We can generally jam whatever we want after it, so... We can put a third ice on this remote server. They're probably pretty bad at running the remote server. Oh, actually, I didn't notice that the Nexus got there. That's going to be six credits for them to install. Which is a fair few credits. So we're just going to make the server as good as possible. We might actually want to get another ice on R&D soon. But if they Nexus this, the Archer hits them. They're always going to Nexus the Archer. Hard hitting news is technically relevant. They run hard hitting news trash OCA. It's actually a lot harder than that errand because they're keeping fall guys around. So we have to do hard hitting news trash fall guy trash fall guy trash OCA. Probably still possible, but they can also pop the fall guys to help clear the eight tags. And turning wheel up means they run HQ. So it's difficult, but you're right. We definitely want to trash this. Throwing out a striker means they probably have another one in hand. That's actually really valuable. And they also are running interdiction, which I don't think matters. That's a garbage agenda. Like, do you know how good an Alice would have been? We could have got like a seven token Atlas, <laughs> which can't be right. But at least we have a good uh, uh, thing to, to get the archer up. We don't want to forfeit the 4-2, obviously. 
It's not great. Olborg, following now on Twitch. How's it going? Thanks for the follow. Looks like they're beginning to be comfortable to interact. The global sex security clearance is coming down. Next turn, we want to do double advance here. Hopefully, we get a nice on here. And they're actually popping a fall guy to get money. Mind you, now they have nine credits, four coming in next turn. This is good. This is why All Sing Eye is such a good card. It's not, you can still stop Fall Guy with All Sing Eye, but there's like all the Annex are running bad pub. This deck is running bad pub. All Sing Eye is relatively terrible in Wayland. That's something. So we can triple advance this, which is not terrible. It means that next turn we can jam whatever we, we, we draw, which is pretty good. All our other plays are kind of trash. Um, high profile target is obviously a win con, but this means they run the remote. I don't think they ever run the remote. And they might start losing a click to see the top card of R&D and like behind a single ice. Oh, actually, that's a good ice. I forgot we put the raven there. I might doubt that's relevant. This, they always nexus. That's a problem. <laughs> Archer's now eight credits to res. Fuck me. Oh boy, whole party's here, my friends, and we haven't seen um, a Calling in Favors, which, I don't know, I think Calling in Favors is actually one influence. Yeah, that's going to be disgusting when that happens. Yikes. Are you serious? GG? How's that possible? How could that be GG? We're on six. Man, if we just had an Alice token... Well, hopefully they have to run the remote here. There's too many things they lose to. I think they have to interact with us. Kevin, what's up? Triple Advance also plays around the source. Yeah, that's true. It does. Uh, it'll keep the fall guy around, but um, Triple Advance, yeah, it's also worth playing around the source. I wasn't considering that. That's pretty right. Price like R&D? Uh, Price like R&D is okay. Um, I like this better because they take two tags, and it feels like they have to run this remote considering we're on six points, so anything we install, we have to run. So you see they're going to go down to low credits and run. They're going to interact with us. Actually, with zero credits, no, they're not. Maybe they're not. I think they just lost by triple installing that. They have no money. They must have thought there was a vanity project in the remote. That'd be pretty wild. If we top deck an agenda, we can win. Of course not. Nope. Nope. We can install advance, advance this, and then they have to interact with us. They'll pop all their money and go. And all their money is only three credits, so I think if we just find an agenda, we're fine. Oh, fuck. This sucks. We just need an agenda. Yeah, maybe the vanity play. I don't play around that card specifically. Someone needs to stop be finding hostels. Yep, yeah. Man, agendas. That maybe betrays the fact that this is not an agenda. They've seen two Rashidas though, and like you generally don't un not advance NGO front, so maybe maybe they'll they'll run on it. Also, Aaron Mage, what's up? Thanks for the follow on Twitch. I get those on the phone here, so I see them. I'm gonna drop my camera a bit. Let me know if this gets in the way of stuff. Uh, they're using Fall Guy just to make the money. They might want to run this turn. Nine credits seems like enough. We only have 17. DJ Fenris coming down slow, and still we don't have it. Fuck me. This, mind you, is also like really expensive. If we advance this once, it's four credits to get through this ice wall. That's a really good card, especially with Nexus. That's such a good card. Advancing this also means nothing, but it's better than doing anything else. Right? This might mean it's a slow roll food, but we probably would have double advanced it. Triple advancing is on the usual play. Think of the size of the apartment. Yeah, I think they say in this one specifically they're sleeping on server racks. It's a lot of people. Now the dream play is to get the Wayland gentrification where you get your corporate town and you just like wipe out everyone. As Reina Roja, -hoo -hoo! doesn't get the link, but ensures that we're going to spend a fair hefty amount of credits. As long as, well, actually, once we res once ice, we're down on 10. So we got to consider what we want to res here and what we don't want to res here. Uh, this one, mind you, is actually five, seven credits to res. Fuck me. This one's even more. Archer is dumb. I don't want to show the border control. That seems important that that's a surprise. Worst case, though, they just access double price sec, which we're pretty happy with. Scrubber taking beer off the damn nexus. Um, thinking. Like, I don't want to ever show that we have a border control here. We want to wait until they nexus something. Resing the archer means that we don't win off of hostiles, so that also doesn't seem great. 
So what is this to break? No, this costs like eight credits to res. That can't be right. That's so bad. But to break this, it's uh, it's also expensive for them. No, do it up. Are the Fall Guys just the dudes who don't make it out when the cops show up? Yeah. That's exactly it. They're the Patsy. Yeah, do it up. It's all good. Okay, so they draw another card. Rain, hello. <laughs> Jesus, how's it going? Uh, we're not going to res that one. They draw another card from the off-campus. They missed that interaction. Can't have him feeling left out. Party's in there. Party is inside. I don't know. This one seems pretty good. Uh, they both actually are the same to, to, to trash. This one, they have a chance of giving us a credit. This is... Actually, this one's more expensive than res. Yeah, fuck it. We'll res it. Let's see if it's automated. So it's four to mouseless. Oh, I don't have actually ten credits anymore. Oh, shit. So we'll do minus one. So actually, does Hernando count? Soul Survivor, what's up? Heck of a house party. Hell yeah, it is. It looks like it doesn't count. Because now we don't have ten? No, we should have paid three more. Hernando should have fired. Island, what's up? Yeah, I think we definitely have to play that. It's not automated. Automated system out of chess going. Uh, any number of code gate subroutines. Oh, beans. Forgot about that. Okay. Okay. So we don't res the archer for sure. And they're gonna end with two tags. Uh, we could consider resing the hoardum. It costs us four. Uh, let's think about it. it. Costs us four. Costs them four. No, they have more money than me. Okay, so action before access. We're gonna go ahead and res this pop five. And so they've committed to accessing. Uh, we would ask access and they say yes. Yeah, we're gonna pay for price tech for sure. No matter what, we'd have enough to do both though. So this doesn't meet damage, which isn't that relevant. That actually matters, but hopefully we win before that. Trashing that for scrubber for one. We got another price tech. So they have two tags, so they can clear both of them. That means economic warfare into hard hitting news that might actually be just like a temple play, but they have a fair bit of link. Oh, uh, we actually can't play Economic Warfare because it's an if able clause. So if they had one more credit, oh, we win. Damn, we're good. Also, if we drew the, host the, the Atlas, we win. Because we had the audacity in hand. Yeah, so that was a slow game. Yeah, yeah, just a bit. You were getting there. So that deck is pretty slow. There's a chance actually that they don't do a bunch of the stuff that they did. Like against these sort of decks, you might want to not install your scrubber. I guess actually, whatever, with off-campus apartment, is it's free. But there's some of these cards that you just don't want to install and run. Like there's no reason to install a turning wheel. Uh, it does help them win, but this might just be enough. And you just need to go fast. This deck, once it's set up, it's absolutely monstrous. But yeah, you got to play not your deck, but you got to play the matchup. I don't think they played that poorly by any means, though. I feel like you want Rez more ice to play around Hernando right now. I think you're right, but like there's a lot of draws that we went off the top, and I think the border control probably wins us the game. Like we we got to get them to Nexus the Archer, so we have to res both of these. But yeah, you are right. Generally against Reyna, you want to res as much as you can. But going down to that few credits, it's so hard for us to recover. Considering we threw out two other NGO fronts. Let's see what our deck looked like. All right, these games are pretty fast. We're going to play one more, and then we're going to do some, some custom deck building. We got a fun idea tonight. I think it actually won't be terrible. Whoa, if you're just shooting in, this is what the graphic looks like. That button doesn't work. Okay, my face is going to shift slightly. Ooh, there's the graphic. Play my Adam list tonight. Zinc Sauce, your world's second best. Adam, 35th overall. Congrats on the finish. That's a pretty good finish. Um, we have something else planned, though, but I'll pull it up on, on stream. I think I looked through a bunch of the Adam decks of our Netrunner DB last week. I probably saw yours. Are you the one that was playing Golden for some reason? There was one Adam deck that was playing Golden. Actually won't be terrible. It sounds like a high standard to live up to. <laughs> Such fancy. This must be the Golden deck, no? No, not Golden. Most are though. Yeah, what's, what's with that? Is it all because of uh, everyone's like terrified of Surveyor? It's not loading. Are you sure you made a deck list? Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. Looks like Adam. You got Strike. Cajun Chip. I don't know. That's always the problem I have. And it's like the same with Valencia lists. It's all the Valencia lists. Actually, not true. 
the one world a couple of the world's Valencia lists are very spicy but a lot of these lists are like pretty similar it's because especially like Adam like you have to play a lot of the good stuff and a lot of the good stuff is like the neutral econ package so all the Adam decks are the same but Adam's a lot of fun I think Adam's not terrible misdirection's spicy you can't tutor for that oh I guess you could in theory yeah you can creativity it that's actually pretty cool fuck that's a bad matchup that's a terrible matchup Edward Kim smashes things really bad for us um this actually might be like obviously you want one piece of ice to keep Kim out but like they only trash one of these this is super risky. It's Surveyor. Just use Lamb? Yeah, you could. A lot of people are playing Golden, though. Yo, Chris, what's up? Good games. Assuming I wasn't getting ripped during that game. Oh, no, no, not at all. No, I think you played that pretty well, considering with the matchup not looking that great. Thanks, you too. All right. I don't recommend recognize his name. Yeah, fuck it. Let's just do it. They're going to run HQ 100% of the time, so if they hit one hard hitting news, they might feel pretty confident about themselves, and then we can hit them with the second one. But if they do like Dirty Laundry HQ and play like a gamble, oh Jesus, it's going to be bad. Creativity Misdirection is hilarious after HHN. Yeah, I think that's like a really cool play. That's a super cool play. All right, gamble. SMC, fuck, that's scary. That's not the opening we expected. Installing SMC already for consume? Okay. So this is any card. It's not installed, right? When you trash a corp card. Running R&D. Okay, well... We might be able just to hard hitting use them here. We don't have the punishment, mind you. This deck actually doesn't float a lot of punishment. Trash Rashida for one. That puts a counter on here. Five influence, mind you, this card. And they spent, like, we've seen eight influence on turn one. Also, what do they do if they find an agenda here? I hopefully have I've had worse in hand. That's nice. That's good. If you're after mildly spicy decks, this Lies has been serving me well. I'll check that out, Cursor. Uh, let's just finish our turn here. We got a cool deck today, though. We do, we do. Generally, if you want to figure out what we're playing, you can look at the YouTube comment name, and you can kind of piece it together. Protecting HQ seems okay. Protecting Re Rashida seems even better. I think we'll just protect Rashida and then just hit them with the news. They can pop this for two credits. Maybe they run HQ trash another one. They know what Isis is, but let's hit hard with the news. Actually, fuck, no. They have a link. Ah, oh, whatever. We've committed. Uh, so they have to pay six, so this is going to go down to seven, which means we can't res. Yeah, we can res this. Oofa doofa. I forgot he has a link. That's actually pretty bad. What Argus list did you use? We're playing still the deck list of the week. Uh, that's generally how we start the stream. So this is Seamus's undefeated KOS list. DOTW. So they're going to remove some tags. Now, the thing about this deck specifically against Wayland modernly is that as long as you remove two tags, you're fine, depending how much money we have. Lies of Mountnelli. All right. Seems fun. Ooh, Ma. I haven't seen a lot of that in Liza. Man, Liza seems really fun. Use consume clear tech. So they have one tag, which, like, we can't do anything to them unless we top deck exactly both copies of both of our um, damage, meat damage card. We found one of them, which isn't good enough. Again, not drawing at agendas. Like, this is such a good way to jam agendas. Yeah, Ma seems really fun. Ghost of Goat is an Australian player played against an Australian asynchronous league. Oh, cool. Thanks, Marc-Andre. Did you play against this deck? So, again, all the agendas are in, in HQ, but, like, they can't really interact with us. I kind of want to ice up HQ. If we ice up HQ, we can do, like, hedge fund IPO. That's good, I guess. Again, if we, like, we can draw once, and if we hit the 1 in 38 for a second high-profile target, we win the game. Oh, wait, mandatory draw. Maybe we win here. No, we don't. Um, but then they can't have I've had worse in hand. So, all right. Well, we got more money than them, which is always a threat. And we have another hard hitting news behind the end to run. Took Argus to Belgian Nats last weekend. Would have liked the border control. Is it not legal there, Cursor? System draw first. Yeah, we totally forgot about the Mando draw. <laughs> Jaina has her back, though. You want TBTF instead. I don't want it ever too big to fail. Too big to fail is our panic card, right? Like, giving them bad pub, I don't want to ever do. The clear to tag, they're on zero. Oh, that's going to go poorly for them. Like, you generally don't too big to fail as you play this card as a... Rec like, you never play a turn one in almost any matchup. You always play this as a recovery after you go down to few credits, after you've used all their money to hard hitting lose them, so that you can do things like oh, too big to fail into, like, high profile target. Like, this is a surprise card. Now, admittedly, they are the only runner that can trash this, so it's not totally safe, but I don't want to do that. 
So we can draw once. We can just ice R and D, I guess, and we just hit them again. Wow, we got all three too big. Oh, that's, that's bad for them. Now they'd probably die. They can't get into HQ. They'd probably die. Yeah. Yeah, it's risky. Yeah, that's pretty risky. And if they can't clear these tags, they lose. So they probably just lost. They saw one to hard hitting news and they probably thought they were okay. Pretty sure it's legal in every format. Holy shit. Yeah, Raven, I think one of the best things you can do is never play uh, this card at first turn. It took me a while to figure it out. Uh, but like you always keep this in hand because then they run and then you'd be like, okay, too big to fail, hard hitting news. Like even not to recover to do the opposite. Sometimes that wins too. This does eight me damage. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Good game. Uh, the other one. Actually, I have had all three HHN in hand. Pretty nuts draw. I kept two in opening, hoping you'd Kim one and feel safe. Jeez. They will be legal for all the weekend side events, is actually what the site said. Actually, it's unclear if they'll be ever legal in tournament formats. Yeah, it's hard, right? Didn't get lucky on R&D. Uh, I think they accessed like three cards. Getting consumed, I really felt good. Eight, eight influence, one turn. Yeah. Yeah, so with Kim, Kim snowballs a bit with consume, right? Because if they trash cards, you see more cards, you can trash more cards, sort of. It's a scary combo. Yo, Vicky, how's it going? Magical draws, you know. We practice a lot of Netrunners, so sometimes it just manifests like that. You know, you put the hours in, and then eventually R&D is good. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> How's it going, by the way, Vicky? After Dutch and Hungarian Nets, every tournament is unofficial. That's not true. Uh, there's GNKs. There's official GNKs um, coming out. You got NGO fronts as prize support. 3 Grave Gravedigger, Friday Chip, all that good stuff. Man, Friday Chip never took off, did it? Excuse me, that's a pretty fun econ engine though. I haven't tried it. Well, thanks for the game. How long can you make a name? What up, Maniac? What do you mean, Maniac? How are you doing, by the way? So will new champ cards be legal for GMKs? I think they are. I really think they are. Um. Anyways, huge shout outs to Seamus. Had the pleasure of meeting Seamus at uh, World Gentleman and a Scholar. Uh, and that's his deck. Uh, we're going to just do a quick news stop. There's some stuff to talk about today, and then we're going to jump into some deck building, and then we're going to grind out some new games with this weird deck. Watching Netflix is a show. I'm good. Oh, yeah, that's a show that came out last week with, like, uh, Jonah and Emma Stone in it. Seems cool. Looks like some spotless mind sort of stuff. Good luck. Go get them. Thank you. We allow them all in our meta. Yeah, I guess it depends on your meta, right? The community made ones. Fuck me, man. One of those cards is terrible. One of those cards is so rough. Uh, things to say today, new stuff. Firstly, check this out if you care about your community. Maybe put some time in to help run an event. Uh, this is a survey involved about Nisei, which if you don't know, Nisei is the community-run group that is uh, looking to continue to organize support of Netrunner in many, many ways. So uh, hit this up if you want to, if you're like, your meta is interested in... Uh, in like running stuff because they're going to support them um from what i heard actually at ffg they gave a bunch of like official card support to nisei so like they have legit prizes let alone they're going to be making their own stuff like just check this out if you care about it hit them up with an email i know in our meta we sent an email saying and we want to do everything so uh, hopefully we get something in the near future that's really cool uh other stuff we got 600 dpi scans of a lot of stuff yeah there you go if you want all the full art ids they're up here on netrunner um, you want to play them damn top eight cards? Oh, I didn't realize I put Jackson on that. Actually, some of them? This is not all of them, is it? I guess it's hard for this person to get all of them. I feel like there's other news I'm forgetting. What am I forgetting? I wonder what a Maniac deck would look like. I haven't seen the show yet, so I don't actually know. Um, I think there was like another big news thing. Magic the Gathering has their open beta today. If you want to play card games online, that's a cool thing, right? Magnus, what's up? Can these new cards be bought? Physical copies? Uh, these cards, they can't be bought. These are limited. Um, I actually have one of these because I was top eight criminal, but these were given out to the top eight of every faction on each day of Worlds. And then the top 16 got a full playset of every faction. So there's actually, it's this probably one of the most rare Netrunner cards. These series might represent the most rare Netrunner cards in all of Netrunner. I might have made that up entirely. So you can't buy them, no. 
There's no plans. Gabriel Santiago, Freedom Fighter. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what it says? Holy shit. Whoops. Oh, that's terrible. That's Reina's. What does Reina say? Freedom Fighter as well. Are they all Freedom Fighter? Jinteki Freedom Fighter. NBN Freedom Fighter. Oh, wow. That's rough. Thanks for pointing that out. That's going to ruin that card forever for me. Damn it. <laughs> also, how's it going, Magnus? It's cool because he's a different ID than the other Gabe. So you can play both in NAPD. Count it. Count it. Technically a different ID. He also, there's like two criminals that have savvy something as their, as their card. Investor savvy something. Oh, man. They ran out of words, right? Also, Lep Lepsis Magna put out, this is the big old acrylic PE, which, as a scan, looks very similar to the other PE. It is pretty, though. It's fine. I feel like there's more news. Belgian Nationals was this weekend. I was like, I'm going to take time to do news, and I forgot what, entirely what I was, had to say. Okay. He fights for freedom of money and other people's wallets. Aren't we all fighting for freedom, you know? I'm 14 and this is deep. Uh, let's build a deck. We gotta open Chrome for that. If you're just tuning in, my name's Andre. How's it going? Uh, Thursday evening, maybe Friday morning. Maybe you're watching us on the VOD on literally, it could be any day. Literally any day. Uh, thanks so much for dropping by. How y'all doing? Can Con is savvy skip tracer. Fisk is savvy investor. Man, you got a good adjective. Just use it on everything, you know? I don't think I've ever used the word savvy in conversation. I use the word savvy, actually. Not a fair bit, but I, I know I typed it in an email today and I had to check how many V's was in it. Uh, we're building a corp deck. <laughs> They're relatives. All criminals are relatives in my head canon. We're building a yellow deck. Maybe like recurring connections or something? Oh, I gotta watch that show. You know the maniac thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know what that show is. It's about dreams. There's actually like analog dreamers. Maybe you want to do that. It's hard to build a card around that. All right. Um... Often when talking like a pirate and savvy. Oh, does that mean? I think a parlay. Uh, okay, we're playing an NBN deck because we're killing runners. We are playing NBN net damage death deck. Uh, today, uh, one question. Uh, enable. Uh, one question is what ID to play. And there's an argument for making news. And this is kind of a problem with generalist IDs, like engineering in the future was, is anytime you have like a weird janky deck that doesn't specifically require like card draw, you would just want to go ahead and play in a harpsichord. Because harpsichord, um, I'm sorry, I meant to say Asmari, because Asmari gives you credits. And that's real cool. And credits are good because our deck is largely going to be bad otherwise if we don't have money. So we probably have to do that. We can change this later. We're not baked in here. Um, the idea is what we want to play today. And this was kind of like a goal I've had for a while. Uh... Uh, to make a deck that does this, and that's actually to make an NBN deck that deck that kills you with self destruct, a card that is super super red and hasn't seen. I've never actually seen this played. Idea is that you can trash self destruct and your whole server to do a trace X, and as long as you have more money than the run than the the runner, and mind you, this is the reason why we might wanted to have considered uh, playing um, uh, making news. I guess two credits for the trace. You can do three net damage. And if they don't have a lot of cards in hand, three net damage is lethal. This is actually a card that might be straight up playable in some like Kakugo decks, some cards like that. But actually NBN has a fair bit of cards that actually attack relatively aggressively even during a run, how many cards are in the runner's hand. And there are also a bunch of cards that people don't play. So we're gonna try and play them. Let's see what we have. We have Waver, a card that actually might be one of my favorite cards that I don't ever play. This is a Trace 5, and this does a couple things. It lets you see their grip, which has some value, I guess. And then you can do a Trace. Sorry, you see the grip actually happens after the Trace, but you can Trace. If you do a really big Trace, you can wipe out their whole hand. All that's important is you wipe out at least three cards from their grip, so they go down to two hands, and then fire another Trace with Self-Destruct. And they die. On top of that, if you want to know what's in hand, this is another card that we haven't played that's new, is Peeping Tom. Which is a new card. This did get eroded so that it loses its subroutines at the end of the run. Or end of the run, right? Yeah. Um, but this also lets you see their hand. So you know how many cards you have to fire with Waver. It's also like a fine ice that we haven't played. Uh, like Jim is saying in chat, of course, another really strong card for this sort of archetype, and you saw this in Chinteki decks, is Data Loop. Which legitimately says lose two cards from your hand. Now this card is really expensive, but if they run a server with four cards in their hand and you have more money than them, you win the game. 
you do data loop, they put two cards in the middle of the deck, and then you blow them up. And that's as easy as this could be. It could be a two-card combo. Again, they have to run with few cards in hand, and then they die. And on top of this, we can build some other interesting stuff to play some cards that we probably haven't played before. Targeted marketing seems okay with this sort of shit with this sort of archetype so we know what's in their hand so sometimes we can target get a lot of money helps with the trace especially if they need to install the breaker to charge your remote on top of that there's a lot of cards probably i'm not forgetting uh that i am forgetting that are probably worth playing uh on top of that we have cards like uh procedure or something standard procedure we can look at their grip and gain money uh that helps with all the other stuff like the waiver stuff and if we want to do that we can also play some denial on top of it and play like salem's hospitality as soon as you start playing things like this, they start installing things because they're scared, and that means they might have few cards in hand. Again, a bit convoluted, and we have a 40-card deck, but this actually is a legitimate combo. I actually have some pretty good uh, ideas that Data Loop, Wave, or Self-Destruct might legitimately win games, and I'm excited to do that because we haven't done it. For what it's worth, I think it's also really easy to put Self-Destruct and spend a lot of influence and put Kakago and Data Loop into like a Jinteki deck, and it's probably good too. Like Nobody plays around this thing. Other cards we could play, and I would love some suggestions because, again, this has not been well thought out. And there's probably a lot of, like, fringe cards that in some cases could be good. Uh, I'm talking about, not Recon Drone. There's, like, this terrible NBN card that's, like, an upgrade. It says if they're traced and they make a run on the remote, then you can do a tag. Or you can do meat damage. It's, like, literally terrible. But, like, cards like this that are terrible are probably actually still terrible. But that's the idea, right? Oh, this is traced to do meat damage? Why does this card exist? I guess that's something to be said about those two cycles. Do you want to do Bankers MVT, whatever? We're not doing Asset Spam. I don't really have a reason to. I want to play like li li traditional Glacier. Jim, and actually, I saw that before with Snare and Junebug being suggested. Also, Infinite Jester, what's up? Urban Renewal, Self Destruct, Biotech is a great meme. Yeah, Biotech is actually pretty good with this combo, too. Um, that's possible. I think I just want to go for remote servers. I don't love Junebug because as soon as they see the Junebug, they know. I guess actually Junebug is really good with Waver. Maybe we do Junebug. Well, yeah. Yeah, Rain's saying it too. Michigan, I built an Azmari self destruct deck a couple months ago. So many kills on turn one and two. Komine Inu, this was good. Oh shit, Michigan Master, that's dope. Like, we can just play Cortex Lock and win turn one, right? Doing out of Acme means your ice is mean, and you can UCF them to win. That's super interesting, and Aaron, that also brings up another really cool combo uh, that you have with Self-Destruct, is cards like this, and I don't think we have enough value to play this, but cards like Bandwidth, if you destroy the server with Self-Destruct, the server is not, the run is not successful, and then they actually end their turn with a tag. So there is some really fun stuff with that, but you're right, Acme actually doesn't seem terrible either. The problem is, like, we're going to be running for sure Waver and Peeping Tom and Data Loop, which Data Loop has minimal value with, with Acme, but these, like, sure as hell don't, so... I'm actually peeping Tom with behind it. Maybe it does. I don't know. Don't go too hard into the jank tank. Just win by surprise. I think just win by surprise might be good enough. But I also want to kind of show off some of the cards that we haven't played. And some of these are actually like legitimately okay. I think we'll start with the generalist Ismari and then see if we can go somewhere by that. Oh my god. Cortex. Yeah, just ignore me. Cortex is like too influenced. And I always run into it. Soul plus housekeeping isn't horrible for your ID choice. It's not. But that's a lot of influence. Housekeeping is like three. And housekeeping is. That's okay. This, though, like, it makes it too obvious that we're doing something bizarre. And that's what I don't like. It's not like anyone's gonna be like, housekeeping, oh, they're on self destruct, better keep my link up. Like, I don't think that's what's gonna happen, but yeah, maybe that's fun. Slot machine, yeah, I think also, Jim, we wanna try a slot machine just on the basis that it's a new card. Yeah, actually, maybe not. It's not implemented. That's gonna be a nightmare to play on JNet. Its abilities are really difficult to, to manipulate. Let's build a deck. Yeah, I don't think we can do a slot machine just too soon. It's like really fiddly. And if you need to do it manually on JNet, it's going to take you like a year. It's real hard. It's real not easy to do. You got to like draw three, look at them. Eh. Yeah, yeah, Eric. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, uh, so let's put the cards in our deck that we know that we want to play for sure. So that's going to be three copies of Self-Destruct. Secret of Trash might be an issue. Don't worry about that. We'll play at least one copy of Preemptive. Uh, we're going to need a butt ton of money. Because some of our ice is pretty big. I think on average our ice will cost three to four credits, which is a lot. So we have Ismari. Gonna go play that hedge fund. We're gonna go play them uh, IPOs. We'll see where we go for that. Do you want a Jinja? I don't think we need to. Jinja shows our ice, which sucks. Like, if they see a waiver, they'll be like, mm, I'm not gonna let this fire. 
A lot of times people faceplant JNet. Uh, yellow ice. I don't want to show them what it is. Uh, we definitely want more money than that, so we can look into that in the near future. Uh, I don't think actually we need to put tag punishment in this deck because it probably doesn't matter. Oh, actually, we could go ahead and add punitives too. No, actually, that doesn't actually work with self-destruct, does it? No, it doesn't. That's pretty bad. Yeah, NG on Rashida. I think that's how you make a good deck, right? I think you just put these in there. If you play NBN, he's going to keep their link up anyways. Or they're going to keep their link up? Maybe. Not so much against Esmari. Yeah, I like targeted marketing better than scarcity. Scarcity is kind of like, I think, maybe double dipping into Esmari. Because you actually want to maybe have them install resources. It's really good for, like, full denial. But specifically against his Esmari deck, if we, like, play scarcity, th their resources will be stuck in hand forever. And we don't want that to happen. We want them to install all their shit. We want them to install everything and run. So, like, fuck it. We'll play targeted marketing. I don't know. It's fine. It's three of. That's probably too much. Uh, let's get all those stupid cards in and see how bad they are, which is probably not great, but Data Loop is cool. And we want to do some net damage cards. Cortex Lock, very good early game, very bad late game. Uh, actually, not terrible. It's still kind of hard to break. And even if it fires for one damage, it's like pretty good. We can also run a Komainu or a Brainstorm. Both equally cheesy. Yeah, New Sound, that's pretty good. Batty doesn't do that much in this deck unless specifically we run more subroutines that do bulk meat damage, net damage. So like the best one right now is Cortex Lock. It does nothing with Komainu. It has some value with Data Loop if you can end the run so they can rerun the remote server. Uh, but that's also like a three to four influence card. Hersonwood, how's it going? Don't recognize the name. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, bias reporting. I don't like this card at all. I never did. It's an econ card though. I think actually if we want to do that, we can probably start with standard procedure. It's like a very similar econ card, except this is about hand. And this encourages them to install things. Batty, you can fire waiver. Yeah, that's a consideration. I, it's not like a quick snap. Yeah, I think we can do it. But if we have influence left over, let's consider that. Uh, oh, this deck is weird, huh? And we just have to put like good ice in the deck too. So what's good ice? IP block seems always relevant. Uh, Enigma is always good. Maybe we want three of that. It's probably too cheesy. A uh, new sound is really good. Always good. Wow, that's already 38 cards. Holy shit. What? What? How did that happen? How did that happen? Kakuyo, what up? If we have influence, we have a lot of influence. This obviously tells them that our deck is up to something dumb, but our deck is up to something dumb regardless. Yeah, let's do it. And we might spend, what, two influence? We can make this a three, uh, like a six agenda deck, which is pretty cute. Uh, so we could do like three foods. Three foods and then three like media. What's it called? Uh, I always forget this one. Uh, the green mill. Like this is pretty common, popular. We'd have to take cards out of our deck. Conduit, what up? Late to the party. Love the world's commentary. Andre plus Hollis was legendary. Conduit, welcome to the Montreal uh, Slack, too. I saw you join today. How's it going? Thank you also for those kind words. Welcome to Montreal. Ecommon69 says that. Yeah, we have, we, have, we have some money in this deck. Um, if we're playing these agendas and we don't have that good of a scoring plan, which our ice is like medium bad, uh, we could... Well, they break this for three credits. Let's well, maybe do a few weirdos. Uh, we could actually maybe want to play one copy of that. What's that shuffle effect that came in Rain and Reverie? Is Cobra better and use influence on Death and Taxes? Death and Taxes is another card that like discourages them from installing things. I don't know. Death and Taxes doesn't fire with self destruct. Oh man, the whole server. Maybe one echo chamber. Michigan, I don't think that's terrible, but I don't think we actually are going to try and win by scoring out agendas. Why food if they need three agendas to win anyways? Oh yeah, piss off. That's perfect. Yeah, this is what people do. They don't do food. Thank you, Rain. That was very reasonable. Kyle, what's up also? Attitude adjustment for reshuffling. That's the one. Thank you. I forgot the name of that one. Yeah, I'll at least play one of those. It seems pretty good. Also, Herson Wood has it in chat too. Adjustment Island had it too. Okay, I'm gonna say whoever said it first is whoever I see it first. Along with three pointers, you could cut Kakugo for punitive. Yeah, that's actually pretty good, right? Like, if we play data loops, we have punitive. The thing is, we don't have a lot of money. That also encourages them to keep their money up, though. As soon as they see punitive, they're not going to run the remote until they have, a, like, a, a modicum of credits. And that actually, like, goofs us up real bad. Because, like, we need a credit advantage to win. And if they're respecting punitive, they're also respecting self-destruct. So, that might actually work against us to run punitive, now that I think about it. 
44 card deck means like cards like Tarmari probably don't make the cut. Oh, we still have two influence. What's like the spiciest net damage card? How much influence is Neural Katana? Three? Two? Woo! Are we playing Neural Katana? That's a beautiful card. <laughs> net please rotate it, unfortunately. So if they don't see self-destruct, they don't worry about it. Mm, I think we're playing Neural Katana. <laughs> what other cards do net damage, right? Did our snake leave Mamba? Didn't a Mamba rotate? No. Oh, this is terrible. There used to actually like be a pretty good net damage card in Jinteg in NBM. There used to be another snake that let you look at their grip and then like trace to do a damage to them whenever you wanted. It was like super cool. Man, I like that card a fair bit. Like, not Snoop, I forget what it's called. Shinobi, what up? Jake Davis, don't play bad cards? Yo, come on. What are you talking about? We play a lot of, like, we're playing suboptimal cards together to make a combination that could be considered over-optimal. It doesn't even show a Shinobi because it rotated. Man, that card kills. Snoop, Flare. Man, Flare's too expensive for this deck, but Flare actually does meat damage during a run. Snoop rotated, right? Yeah, it did. Fuck. Primary transmission dish? We only have, we don't have enough traces, huh? Anansi. <laughs> Over optimal seems dangerous. Yeah. Anansi's like five influence. Fuck, four? Nah, I can't do that. I think we just got cut cards now, right? Professor Plywood, what's up? Snare? Snare doesn't work with uh, self destruct. You can never fire both, which sucks. In theory, if you want to spend more influence, we could do like snare and then also play it. Like, this is the easiest way to do this deck. Like, yo, do this deck in Jinteki, put in self destruct, put in uh, the fox. Ugh, what's the name of the fox? Uh, is Hydra cheaper? It might be worth building around. Yeah, Hydra's not good enough. If you're for five, it's good. Um, excuse me. Kitsune, thank you, Apathy. I just gotta wait long enough for the chat delay to come up. Like, play Zinjuteki, play Kitsune, feed them a snare, self-destruct them. Easiest game of your life. That's all you need. Three card combo, cost you about six to plus trace credits. And then Katsuni trashes, which makes a self-destruct worth. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Gene Splicer for that seventh point. Gene Splicer also doesn't work with, like, self-destruct. Like, we are, I guess it works with Kakago a bit, but the fact that we're putting more and more da damage cards in this deck does not help unless they fire during the run, because self-destruct doesn't fire if they access the Splicer. We can cut some currents. Any problem? No, we've cut one of these. We cut all of these, probably, actually. Fuck this card. Didn't need that. Currents are important because we have three news hounds. Man, what about if we just made the dopest ice sweet? Turn one, Cortex off, self destruct. Oh my god, it'll be so good. Uh, Peeping Tom's probably trash. Peeping Tom's probably not good enough. Actually, we cut IP block. Yeah, just cut a data loop, it's too expensive. We got a good deck. Uh, Mushroom Clout. Oh shit. Minus one Rashida. Ooh, never. Oh, never earned. Best card. Card is too good. This card's insane. It also gives them a reason to run on, on advanced cards, which is really important in this deck because we want them to run on self destruct. Rashida's too good of a card. All right. Last time we made a dumb deck, 100% win rate. Just saying. High expectations for this. Uh, shit tab, that doesn't work. Um, what are we playing as, Mari? Yeah, all right. Assassin, interesting. Not a very common ice we see. Queuing mushroom samba track. I don't know what that means. That sounds fun. Okay. I think Hydra would be playable if we switch this deck to, um, actually Hydra would be pretty good if we switch this deck to Acme, because then it actually fires. And it does three net damage, maybe? It does like a fair bit of net damage. Are you just tuning in? How's it going? Uh, we're not a Fortnite stream. Maybe you got lost. If not, welcome. Um, if you're new around here, maybe make an account in chat. Ask some questions. If you're new to the game, there's actually a fair bit of people that are new to the game. Still seeing new names in chat, as much as the game technically isn't officially supported anymore. Still going good. Got 30 games almost tonight. That's crazy good. Hell yeah. Thursday night Netrunner. Hydra's 3 net, 5 C, eat the run on Acme. Pretty good combo, huh? 
It's a song from Cowboy Bebop. I haven't seen Cowboy Bebop since I was like a teenager. I know I liked it a lot. The music, the, I remember the soundtrack being really good. You can metamorph a self-destruct onto R&D and get a Trace 30. I don't think you can actually do that. There's no way. No, because R&D cards are not considered in the server. No, you can't do that. That'd be cool, though. Yeah, installed in or protecting the server? No, it doesn't work. The only, prefer the only person preventing this from being a Fortnite stream is you. You're totally correct. Kim, scary. 47 cards. Not optimal. Thank you, you too. But again, we are not going for optimal anymore. We're going for over-optimal. They're on 47 cards, mind you. Uh, hand, no money, no self-destruct, no cortex lock. We can give that the hard mall. And it didn't pay off. <laughs> oh, this hand is hot trash. Okay. And here we go. Hard to play this when we know nothing about their hand. Maybe we'll know something about their hand soon. Credit, credit. I think you always call... <laughs> Not quite dead yet. Is the game officially over? Uh, there's no more official support. FFG loses the license in about 22 days, but uh, there's still a lot of support going on outside. So we got to call Asmari. Haven't played a lot of Asmari. Calling research seems always good, but they almost definitely open it with Event. Event does gamble. I think gamble dirty laundry are really scary. What are going to call that? With Kim called DDoS? Fuck, fuck. Oh, we just lost two credits. This is fine. Um, this is fine. All right. If we had more money, we have the combo. Let's go get more money. They'd only be playing DDoS if it's like, okay, they play two resources. We're going to call events again, right? Uh, if they play two, um, play Deuces Wild. That's wild. Dirty Laundry, huge mistake here, actually, because this is almost always an NGO front, and now the server disappears, so they actually don't get eight cre uh, their five credits because the server just disappears. You got the credits, gamble, click one. Shit. So they're not respecting hard hitting news. Oh, that was such a bad play for them. Oh, we gained two credits. They lost five? Fuck me. Okay, there is a slight chance that we win the game right here, right now. We're going to call event. Slight chance we win. Turn one call gamble, then name resource. Is that what I did? I don't remember what I did. Fuck the inside job, no! <laughs> Shit! Shit! If they played anything else, we would have won. Inside job gets around the on axis, so it doesn't do it. I think we just, we know we don't fire self destruct. No! God dang it, inside job? Three influence. That's what happened on our kill server. I don't want to value self-destruct. We only have two data loop. Fuck it. They know what we're up to. We're not value self-destructing. It's fine. I can't believe that happened. I guess, yeah, now they have the same old thing at the inside job. Get an ice on here. That'll technically do. Nah. <laughs> not happy. Uh, we got event money, though, which is pretty cool. Once these casts go away, I'm feeling pretty good about the degree mill. And mind you, it's really hard for us to score out. Like, we actually have to do the kill, and we lost one of them. Our inside job this, my friend. Do it. We always target marketing for the inside job. They're actually probably on DDoS, if they're on that. They actually might even be on Apocalypse. It's your typical self-destruct deck. Nothing to see here, my friends. Nothing. Um, this is good. Technically, they lost seven. Yeah, there was a big loss there. Yo, Mario, what's up? What the hell is this deck? Just tuned in. Uh, it's a self-destruct deck. We got a lot of ways to do damage during runs, so, like, we're just gonna kill them. Install DDoS. Mm okay. Definitely on Apocalypse. Might want to deal with that. Uh, gonna go ahead and fire this. We've drawn most of our agendas, so... Okay. And we're off. Now, the problem is if we go too hard on this... Uh... Like, they can Apocalypse right now, so we need to double ice the server. Kakuko is actually really good against Apocalypse, because even if they DDoS, I guess they could do DDoS inside job, but... I'm going to do R&D. It's a shame that we have to put this here, but if they have an Apocalypse in hand, they have a chance of losing it. 
Playing more money isn't that good. They can always DDoS run this remote. We have a preemptive, which is also a pretty good recovery to things. So I think we actually Tarmar. The thing is we have to Tarmar intelligently. Uh, we've already seen four influence. Apocalypse is three a pop, so they could be on it. I just don't know what else to intelligently call. Do we call? Do we target the apocalypse? Doesn't seem great. Seems kind of lame. If they fire that, like I don't think they will hesitate to give us ten credits to apocalypse our board. I think inside job makes a lot more sense, right? Yeah, I like that a lot better. I gotta actually. This is a little spell check. There's a spelling test here to make sure you're good. Yeah, okay, whatever. That's fine. Yeah, they'll they'll give us ten credits to apocalypse us. I don't think that's gonna be an issue. We also haven't seen a restricted card. They could be on strike. That's three more influence. They're DDoSing us. Can't res that. Can't steal the D green mill. Feeling pretty good. Please don't hit ourselves. Second self destruct. God damn! <laughs> we lost two self destruct in these many turns. Are you kidding me? It looks like they're trying to turn off the current. One and four here. They can't steal the degree mill. Piss. Piss. <laughs> Piss. We're preempting back those things. Fuck them. Oh, yeah. Edward Kim. Ah, oh, shit. Shit. Uh, board state. Things got bad fast, my friends. Oh, my God. We had it. We had so much good stuff going on. I think we, we have to preemptive them. Okay, this is a kill combo. Oh, my God. How mean these cards are together. Oh my god, so mean. And we just can't lose this. So if they hit this, we boost 300 million. And then we just Cortex lock them. We gain two credits with a gamble. They have 19 credits. I did not realize they have that much money. Again, to Green Mill, seeing pretty safe. Actually considering install advanced advance. Nothing is safe anymore. A single lamb is going to goof us up real bad. This does shit. We were doing a really good job with this deck. We got to dig up. We do got to dig up. Seven credits to get through most dice here. This one's actually four. Oh, it's actually five. Feel pretty okay about that. The thing is, if they steal us, they have to return both of these into their deck, which will put them far behind. Put them on game point, though. Jam that in front of HQ. I don't think it's going to do much. I don't want to play this. I definitely want to play this before we lose it. Uh... Uh, actually, Lamb also deals with this terribly. It's like five credits as well. We're going to preempt it back. You know, there's some important cards in our deck. They mostly have big explosions on them, which seems pretty relevant. Have enough money. Tarmar seems good because we got two new hounds on the table. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to call a vent there. They're likely to en passant to laundry to do to like really get annoying. Andre, your deck needs either Warrior Track or Wake Up Call. Warrior doesn't do anything. Fuck DDoS. Warrior doesn't do anything because they're not going to trash stuff. I mean, wake up call. Worried also. I don't think those do anything. Worried specifically puts it back in hand, which seems rough. Okay, it's gonna bait. We're gonna bait them out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the bait. That's the slow roll, Beal. Let's go. Let's go. Mhm. Mm Second DDoS with a knife. Good combo. Pretty strong combo here. Have the money. We are not incentivized to res. We are very much not incentivized to res. Now, mind you, this is seven credits. But they will trash it. And then they get same old thing knife. Fuck me. This is terrifying. How did this happen? Fuck, fuck it. I'm not resing. You know things are bad when I start swearing this much. Like, apologies. You can't res DDoS. Oh, thank you. You're right. If I let Cortex lock... It's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Otherwise, it does two net damage. Okay, let's see how bad this could be. If they hit the degree mill, they have to have they hit the degree mill. Does nothing go our way? Do, they can't shuffle back both of these. They can't shuffle back lamb. Of course they don't. Thank you. Now they're gonna ampassant or shit. There you go. And same old thing ampassant. Ice wasn't important. Got it. <laughs> Got him. This is also like two credits to get through. All right, so we can weather the storm out. That preemptive was really good. They have one more DDoS. No more same old things. Again, hard hitting these would be really good. We don't have it. That's relevant. 
the fuck out of my servers. They have way too many events. A jam degree? Oh yeah, we could have. Yeah, we probably should have actually right there. You're right. Jam self destruct. That's what the play is. Drawing up to them. They're playing around the self destructs. Activist meeting coming down. Luckily, don't actually need this money. Now the problem is they can get through this remote server. Oh, technically. They know it's a degree mail too, so like they just install something around this remote server. This is uh five. This is another five. Angry Andre runner fewer <laughs> tokens, what's up? So I don't want to do that just yet. The waiver makes it a lot more difficult. This gets cards out of the hand, which is pretty sweet, but we have no reason to, to worry about that. Uh, this one ends the run. We're going to take a bunch of tags, which we legitimately don't have punishment to. It means they can't trace the IP block. Yikers. Gonna build a remote that kills him. Oh, counts to nine? Sir? That's a wonderful amount of credits. Yeah, we have some credits. We've ever, as Mari has been firing like a fair bit. I think we got about 10 to 12 credits off as Mari. Earthrise coming down for four. That's a slow turn. That means that the degree mill is no longer super safe. We have a Tarmari to come down. It clears this, which is okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to end up like knifing this remote server. Even same old thing to inside job on the server means it's pretty bad for us because we have to res everything. Uh... We are like pretty, pretty hard cornered here. We can just attitude adjustment our agendas away. Yeah. Fuck it. Oh, we draw first. So we definitely want to shuffle this away. We reveal it too. This is technically safer in our hands than the SSL. We don't need the money. So we just gained four credits. I guess we paid two for it. Oh, we can draw once more and we have a waiver, which is a card that doesn't end the run. We really need to find our self destruct and then we have a real chance of winning. Oh, Ivy. Okay. So they definitely have three hacktivists. So like playing this, this already puts our news hound on. That's worth enough. We do lose one card to self destruct, but like honestly, don't care. Having a billion credits doesn't even seem that relevant. Uh, I think we're gonna have a billion credits. NGO. We could advance it again. The thing is, once we res it, we lose a card from hand, and I don't love that. Like I think we have enough credits to never have to advance this once more. Oh, what's in there? Sorry, you're telling in chat what's in here. DDoS coming down. Final DDoS. That means this is a Kakago. This is a Kakago. That's actually pretty sweet. And I don't think they're actually on Apocalypse. Second hacktivist coming out. Okay, how do I... How do I... Okay, that card's gone. They don't... They, they've seen a lot of three-pointers. So, like, if they, we don't advance this, they might not have to run it. Oh man, we gotta draw this click, which is terrible. Oh, I feel real bad about that. Okay, so this is like our defense against Apocalypse. If it hits an I've had worse, which we haven't seen, it's terrible because it makes them even safer. So committing an ice to this remote also feels pretty bad. Uh, new sounds pre seem pretty good. I think we want to protect the new sounds, and most of the agendas in our are in R and D. Let's go see what their hand looks like, maybe. This is terrible. I think we're going to get on Pissanta and lose a lot of cards. Maybe actually committing ice there before we're going to lose cards is terrible. I have, uh, we lost two self-destructs and we actually had like a pretty legitimate chance of winning. So this is going to be much harder to close the game out considering we have to score <laughs> a lot of agendas. Just like a, a fair bit of agendas. But God. Imp. Okay. Well, my friend. Oh, are you serious? Oh, I'm glad actually we didn't fire that. Uh... We're going to have to ice this stuff up. Half the agendas in the game are here. We only have 17 left in R&D, mind you. We might just want to purge. I don't love the idea of throwing out an ice. But this current actually is pretty bad. It's good once we score an agenda. If we score an agenda. How good is a self-destruct play on HQ? Not amazing yet. Man, waiver 7 for them to break. We're just gonna purge. I don't want to lose any of these cards. Uh, actually, gamble is definitely worst. Oh boy. Um, what is left in their deck? They have one casts, two Earthrise, maybe. In terms of events, they have deuces. They probably have two more. Laundry archives sees five cards. It's worth probably calling events. Anything else is slower. 
Calling resource means that they're harder to steal uh, this thing. Oh, they just played an I've had worse. We got two credits for that. It feels good. Magnum Opus, restricted card. Okay. Infinite money. Most importantly, Cortex Lock, now a dead card. Don't worry, we only played two. They got thrown out a lot of cards. Another imp gone. This is what they all feel they need. DDoS. Lamb <laughs> and Magnum Opus. Gravedigger. Jesus, that's mean. Uh, and I don't think they're wrong. That is technically all they need. We really need a... Oh, wait, no. I forgot about Hacktivist. Okay. Uh, I'll live with that. No self-destruct. All three in the bottom 14. Literally garbage. I don't think they're on Apocalypse anymore. Oh, boy. Okay. We just want them to run this. They're considering it. Oh, shit. They run amok. Not a surprise. And we could have jammed an agenda. Some days are worse than others. This is one of them. This card's gross. Can we count of influence to see whether Apex in play? Apex almost definitely not in play, considering that they're playing like Grave Digger. I think Grave Digger tells us they're not, but they're not also playing any permanent assets. Actually, Bagot probably means they're not on Apocalypse too. I think that's enough. Also, Magna means they're not on Apocalypse, let alone Lamb. Like this stuff is too expensive. We haven't even seen any Heat Breakers. I don't think we have to worry about Apocalypse. Over advance and bait the run. There's like no reason to over advance this card though. If it's a five three, we'd scored it, and we've waited too long. That's obvious. It's not a five three. But there's like nothing we would draw that makes us not want to score a 5-3 here. Continuing to advance this does nothing for us but wastes time. Piss. <laughs> Yikes. I think they run HQ this turn. Which actually might mean we want to... Uh... Yeah, hold on. Undo click. This actually sucks. We should have done this on HQ, not here, because now it's 50-50 agendas in hand. Because like their next play is basically build up a turn so they can on Passant and then run amok HQ. Second I've had worse, more two credits. Why don't I play Tarmar to clear Hacktivist? Honestly, don't care enough. This is not doing anything. Like We have no resible cards anymore. And now they've gone down to a few credits. We can start jamming. This is scary. Obviously, this combination is scary. And we literally have three self-destruct in bottom 11. Feels bad. And HQ is officially flooded. We have to do something. We have to do something. This is probably part of the game where we lose. An inside job, are you serious? Yeah, the three in the bottom is an issue. So they're gonna run a muck the server and then like on passant. She said the best thing is that they they don't like they need a magnum a fair bit before they run this. They're actually drawing twice. <laughs> uh, the respect is real. Now they're also good reason to keep Tarmar is that once we are you serious? I guess there's only ten cards left, but that's all the agendas in the game, and they're definitely gonna be running HQ this turn. This turns off the current, which is really bad. Because it means this new sound, it doesn't do anything. It's like terrible for us. So maybe we should have tarmarred into it. Stu has blue. How's it going? Welcome. How are you doing? Want to take money from the NGO before trashing it? Uh, Hacktivist was online, and we didn't want to lose one of the cards. We have too many agendas in hand. Cut tarmars for more attitudes. Attitudes are probably better in this deck because we don't actually have a really strong scoring plan, and it helps us find some of our other combo cards. So I think you're right. So there's a knifed. Uh, can't res the outside one. New sound is fine. This is the turn we lose. Piox, what's up? How's it going? It's okay. It's going okay. Our cool deck isn't doing its thing. I think we're actually pretty unlucky. Apathy, but that's a pun actually about I guess your whole game plan just blew up. Well played. Trace three. They don't have a lot of credits. They really don't have a lot of credits. And this is a disgusting run. Like an imp. 
Oh, the good. They're actually making this a barrier and breaking it, which is almost all their money, which means this actually might end the run, the Kakugo. Hell yeah. Kakugo's going to end the run. So we do destroy it. That actually worked out pretty good for us. Just kidding. Fuck me, man. Kaka goes two to break. And this is so risky. Like, if we had anything, any good sentry here. Oh, man. We're just going to get blown up right here. So, this is an imp. A bagat. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. SSL. They stole that. They actually... And we lost our self-destruct off the top. God fucking damn it. Why did they let me do that? Why did I gain that much money? Oh, I have an SSL. Oh, I'm good. I am good at this game. Ah, really? Self-destruct off the top. So they have maybe one more run of muck. Maybe one more en passant. Probably one run of muck. Definitely one more en passant. Uh, our server here is actually relatively good. That's three imp counters. If we purge, they can just like click up Magnum. And now these are dead, right? Like these are on game point, they don't matter. Because you shuffle your cards if you win, right? It doesn't matter. I can't believe they actually trashed the news hound. It was just a chase three. It didn't seem like it mattered. And there's so many cards in archives. I think they run archives. I think we're gonna purge. The imps. I don't know, maybe that's wrong. How many knifed and bin? That's all three. That's all three of them. And no hard hitting news. Mm-hmm. Check archives. Maybe we actually do need Hive Mind in here, just so that we have a way of threatening an unadvanced card in a remote server. Because we get them! We definitely get them! If we can put a self-destruct in here, we might get them. Run amok. Okay, so we probably, we have a big chance of losing here. So if he reses, it gets trashed. Man, all these single runs, right? Mark, what's up? Why not res the IP block? You can have out-traced and kept them out, preventing the knife from working and keeping Bagaf from firing. A couple reasons. Largely, DDoS was on the table, so we couldn't res it, but they actually do have a barrier breaker. But DDoS was up, so we couldn't. Or they trashed DDoS, so we couldn't. I'm not going to res any of this stuff. This size is too good, and we have a big chance of losing here. Chaos Jester, also, what's up? I thought they were all credits short of breaking all subs. Yeah, good game. Oh, seven cards, two of them left. That was brutal. Fuck, that's not what you want to see. Ah, oh, shit. Had a fair bit. So rich, get some toll booths. Yeah, maybe. The thing is, like, we're only rich because we res nothing. Like, we legitimately didn't res ice this game and played every single econ card. We needed the money also for the trace. I guess not so much in this matchup. That was brutal. Ah, I'm not discouraged, though. That inside job sucked. Localized product line? I don't want to show them that we're on self-destruct. Localized product line you have to reveal. <laughs> in every deck. It's like a pretty good card. It was sad when you, was sad when you after I made your two ice disappear. Kept drawing them. I had a kill on that inside job. Had you just ran it. It's sad to see that go. Man, even just like Nigma. Yeah, Nigma's probably good. Like the thing is we haven't seen this deck do its thing. Like legitimately none of the ice fired all game. Like none of the ice fired. So I don't think that's a good example of what this deck can do. So let's do it up. I'll try it again. Got absolutely destroyed there. Just tuning in, what's up? We got a lethal JNet. Like we have three Kakugos, not one Kakugo fired. And I'm aware that Kakugo isn't going to kill them, but like, if you put Kakugos in the deck, you hope your Kakugo is fire. What's this deck's game plan? Uh, it's to make them have less than three cards in their hand when they're running a server that has self-destruct in it, and then they die. That's entirely the game plan. I think it's somewhat viable. We did have a win on turn three, but they played inside job out of Edward Kim, which we weren't expecting. They could have also DDoSed, but I don't think they would have DDoSed to make a single ice run on a remote, so... Yeah. We have a chance. That's not the worst deck. We got this. We got this. If we won that game, everyone would be like so confident. 100% win rate. Best deck. You have to present lethal, yeah. We do. 
Is there a chance that like if we have a different agenda suite, it's better for us? There's, mind you, a 5-3 that says they have to shuffle their hand. Re-education? Legitimately a 5-3 that helps us win. Terrible card. Is lethal if you play kill switch. That's kind of cool. But this says when you score re-education, add any number of cards HQ to the bottom of R&D, which is really good if we never shuffle. Get those agendas out of the deck. And we made them have no cards sometimes. We only use self-destruct in a director house deck. I think that's largely how people play self-destruct is to protect executives. Without Jackson, I don't know. Yeah, executives are strapped would probably be pretty good. Miss Jenkins is pretty good too. With hard hitting news, but one tag, yeah. She's pretty good. Twenty two games on tonight. Two in the competitive lobby. So boy Eric George, what up? You also see a lot of Paranoid. I've seen a lot of Paranoid in the lobby. Paranoid being the world champion. Just like jamming games in the casual lobby. They're still playing, you know? You win worlds and you're like, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, these are organized games. Besides credits. Fuck it. We're going to play against Eric. Yo, 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 yo. Eric came fourth, even better. Uh, great, great, Max, great, we got it. We got the opening, let's go. Re-education kill switch, that's a lethal deck. You can play that at all. This hand's not great. Max on either indexing or something else. Now, she's going to be drawing at the beginning of every turn, so not the best matchup, but uh, we'll take it. The thing is, credits, or Eric is not going to expect this weird deck. And we have the kill combo. <laughs> You're all good. Uh, best of luck. Have fun. Osti. Osti, okay. We are swearing in French. This is good. Uh, we always go for it. I don't know if Eric... I don't know if Eric runs it. We'll find out. We're going to call event. Darn dirty laundry. Amakua data folding. Zach, what's up? Gotta say, I like jank streams more than pre-world streams. Though I do like both. Glad you're enjoying it. We'll take two credits. Folding's down. Three of them in the deck. Not the Rashida. But install advance advance means they might want to run it. Generally, these uh, Azamari decks are on uh, six three-pointers, so like having this go through early is pretty bad for them. They know if it is a, a degree mill, they're going to have to install another card. Again, chance we win here. And if they're playing big MU, they might be on Maw. That Cortex Lock actually gets really good. Same old thing coming down. Turntable, paperclip in the bin. Speaking of Toronto, right? Did you play against Eric on Tuesday? Didn't get it. Did not get the score. Definitely want to drop one, so we want to consider icing up R&D now. Uh, new sounds relatively good. They might be on Hacktivist. Uh, generally, they're on Levy, so they can't be playing Employee Strike, which helps us a fair bit. And they have one more Folding, which is a good Econ card. Uh, turntable does... Turntable largely in this matchup. Eric knows that this doesn't help with a three-point plan. This is largely the card you install to swap, uh, to, to shuffle with Degree Mill. Which is pretty good. I do like the Kakago on the remote. Our remote's actually relatively good if we can get an agenda in it. So I think we want these on the remote, which means we can put something like this garbage on HQ. I mean on R&D. And we want to play this, play this, which means that's all we have. So we'll res this before I guess a hacktivist. Gain eight. Gain more. We'll keep calling an event, I guess. Asmari! Two credits off the inject, hitting a paperclip, I've had worse, same old thing on Black Orchestra. So they have an I've had worse in hand. Another same old thing's coming down, turning wheel's coming down too, so they might start wanting to pressure. And the fact that they inject means that one levy out is that we know what's in their hand. And in this matchup, you don't keep I've had worse, you play for value. The thing is, they'll probably wait until they play two events in a turn to get around the Asmari tax, which is real. It's a real tax. Uh, still, we have a chance with the data loop of getting the kill. Data loop Kakago. Generally, I guess we want Kakago on the outside. Okay. 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 Let's go. And we still have a fair bit of credits over them. I heard he does not attend Rhino because he was a server there and it made it a bit awkward. Oh, that sucks. You fucking have hunting grounds? Second data folding coming out. They have hunting grounds. That actually turns off data loop. Data loop is now trash. We never res data loop anymore. And they played the hunting grounds. Ah, garbage. 
We're gonna start the next turn with six credits. Gotta do what you gotta do. And what we gotta do is never use data loop. That probably looks like a data raven. Still have more money than them, and chance it's lethal. Again, they have an Ivid worse in hand, if I'm not mistaken. They do. And they probably want their Amakuas down. I'm gonna call event one more time. It's because he hated working there. Oh, shit. Time to layer the data loop. Double data loop. That's a lot of money. Hacktivist coming down. Stim hack on the remote. I think we won. I think we did it. This is going to do a brain damage. This will do three damage. It depends if we hit the Ivad worse or not. Fuck, wait. The Ivad worse is going to make them survive. And they also have a fair bit of credits. Let's ignore that at this point. Do they have... They have MK Ultra. Okay. They could blank the Peeping Tom first. Oh, they could blank Peeping Tom, actually. <laughs> Reza Kakugo out of Esmari. Seems good. Coming down. Five credits. Pay one more to break. Hit the legwork. Three cards in hand. One of them is an I've had worse. If this fires a hit, I've had worse. If this if he lets this fire to fire the I've had worse, we do win the game. We do win the game. What the fuck is this? Nothing. That's cool. If he lets us fire, we win. Unless we hit a second I've had worse. So the problem is we know there's an I've had worse here. Or hold on. Okay, cool. They're thinking. Like, we know there's another I've had worse. If this I've had worse hits an I've had worse, which the chance is actually pretty high. Oh, this deck? Mmm. Maybe they're not on three I've had worse, because maybe Max doesn't need it. Oh, fuck. He's in. Okay, if there's, we know there's an I've had worse in hand. That's an issue. Ah, shit. Suspicious thinking is suspicious eyes. Oh, man. If they fire the I've had worse, they're at zero cards. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, fuck this guy. Oh, we lose our whole server. That's terrible. Let's not do that. Awesome, oh, man. Oh, we lost. Them. This is this is fine. Uh, okay. If they don't have an Ivan worse in hand, they didn't have an Ivan worse in hand. What? What? Didn't you have an Ivan worse? TV. <laughs> oh, cause it ends. The why? Wait, why? How? What? Ha? Huh? Why? How did? The damage from that self-destruct happened at the exact same time the damage from... Yes, why did I die? Yeah! Apparently, Brain and I have worse fired at the exact same time? That doesn't make sense. But Stimac fires after. What's the timing structure here? I'm still alive, I think? Stimac fires... Before or after. Sure, but shouldn't Stimhack fire after the after the self the SD? The bomb goes first, no? I think so. Yeah, that shouldn't have happened in that order. I don't, I'm not surprised there wasn't a lot of testing done on this, KK, so, yeah, yeah, you're cool. Draw three, tra uh, brain one. Cool. Alright, we're still back on. We had it! <laughs> we technically won the game. No, we have an agenda in here, which sucks. Uh... If, is it unsuccessful because the server doesn't exist? Exactly, it's unsuccessful because the server doesn't exist. But the unsuccessfulness doesn't matter. Uh, all that matters is that the run was over. Trashing the server is part of the cost for the trace. Yeah, I don't know. That's a cool timing question. I don't think that ever happened. Uh, let's see what the command is for net damage. Take net. It's take net. I remember. Choose one to three. Got it. You hit a daily cast. Damn, we're good. You think the run ends before the trace fires? Do we have any proof of that? Because I need to get as many wins as I can. That would be actually be really important if we rules lawyer uh, Eric out of a win. Yeah, this is still shit.
This isn't terrible. That's arguably better. They actually probably want to run HQ because of turning wheel and it's open. And we legitimately decimated our board state. Technically, the runner triggers happen first. I don't think it works like that because they're not the same trigger window. Technically, runner triggers happen first? Hold on. No, I think that this has to fire first, right? It'd be weird if it doesn't. Okay. Um, I'm going to call event again. Self-destruct ability causes the server to cease to exist, which immediately ends the run. This affects the last during the run like RSV stop being active. Ruling and end of run abilities like Stimac trigger immediately before... Wait, we killed him? What? Yo. Did we kill him? Did we get him? And to run abilities like Stimac trigger immediately before the trace. Fuck me. <laughs> Thank you. Eric's a really good dude. I can joke around like this. It's fine. Got get cheese, man. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so cool. Judge, judge. What's the game, bud? I didn't know that. That's so good. Oh, I hope he's not upset about that. Okay, count it. Deck, 50% win rate. Super, super good. Win rate is probably not the important thing. What was more important thing is that we learned something. And we learned a lot about ourselves on the way. I also can no longer return to the casual lobby. Oh, there we go. Thank you. I, I don't, that doesn't honestly still make any sense to me. Self-destruct ability causes the server to cease exist, which immediately ends the run. Okay, so it destroying the server, now the run ends, and then it fires. Okay, that makes sense to me now. I read it, and now it makes sense. Doesn't have a lot of cards in hand, this Nat character over here. Might actually be good for us. Thank you. You too. That seems like the kind of idea we want to play against. That specifically seems like the best ID. What about Jinja in this deck? Uh, Tataki, that came up before when we were deck building, and I don't think it's great just because we have a lot of like silly ice. And as soon as they see Kakugos and stuff on the remote, they might not want to run it. Like putting a lot on the ice on the remote actually doesn't matter that much. Adding one credit to the trace, eh. it's obviously, no, no, we don't need to do that hand. Oh boy, we got that turn one SD. Getting a whole fuck ton of agendas. Don't got to play here. Gonna go take them credits. Luckily, a third of our agendas are in HQ. Uh, Nat, a lot of resources, actually. I'd expect more resources than events. Now, the only problem is that they can open with Gamble and Hedge Fund. I'm just going to call resource on this. We've been calling events all the other games. Let's see how resource goes for us. Hacktivist. Gain two with Beth coming down. Three influence. Single axis off the top. Again, against hard-hitting news. Not a good play. Trashing the NGO. Guess they want to get cards out of their hand, huh? We should have drawn first there. We actually should have attitude adjustment there. Gotta live with our mistakes. Always draw first. Plenty of turn. Do you have a whirlpool? Uh, no. That card's actually like a fair bit of influence. And I don't think we need it. It also gets broken. Like, a lot of people are running AI. Uh, here... There's not a lot of events from two credits. Besides, actually, on guinea pig, which they probably are running. I'm still gonna call resource. Probably wrong on two credits. <laughs> Knowing is half the battle. Yeah, the more you know, right? My people are pretty solid. Fuck, we meant to do that in the other order. Uh, we have the combo. We do have the combo. Uh, we could call program here, actually. I do like that. They're going to need programs to interact with us unless they're on DDoS. If they're on DDoS, we install this in the wrong order. But, like, that, that ordering of that turn was abysmal. I'll be the first to say it. That ordering was real bad. I realized halfway, like, we have an attitude adjustment. This is terrible. I'm going to go ahead and call program. If they're clicking for credits, they actually probably want to play an event. Let's try that. And they're not getting their drip. Not nah, clicking for credits times four. Yeah, it feels good. Oh, shit. Patchwork, that's pretty good. You never call hardware. They have a lot of clicks this turn. We gave them the full 15. And we jam both of these and hopefully win. 
throwing out a morning star. Wow, okay. Uh, I think we actually just want to just jam this. Because if a Cortex Lock fires, they die. You know how cheesed you are to get the die to Cortex Lock? Uh, program is also pretty reasonable. I'll call program. Retrieval run incoming, that's fine though. I get, they have to play this and like lamb. Uh, we called program. That didn't work out for us. Actually we did, they have surfer. Swap a piece of barrier ice currently being encountered. Okay, they're on shenanigans, which is fine because we just made a lot of creds and turned off the strike and we still have a good server. Uh, mind you, they still have four unused MU, which is pretty good, let alone small hand size is really good. And at this point, I think event seems pretty good. Uh, retrieval run seems like the play here for sure. I guess you definitely want to throw retrieval out. Like, I have no doubt you do play retrieval run and throw out with patchwork. Like, this sort of nuts combo. They didn't do it here, but, like, you play retrieval run for one credit by throwing out the morning star. Really strong combo. I start guys for retrieval run. Yeah, we could consider it, but there's no current for this. This actually doesn't do that much, he says. Actually, it takes up MU, which is pretty good. Uh, the Cortex Lock still does two damage. Which is probably not enough. IP block is now shit. Kakago is still okay. This is 3 MU. They have 5. So this is 2 damage. So we're going to wait. This is probably not the right turn to jam. We haven't seen any heat breakers yet. But I guess we haven't seen any anything. Uh, none of these are barriers. Lamb could be played for the last 2 MU. It's a pretty alright rig. And we want to make sure that we keep the barriers on the inside. I think we might draw ones here. Oh man, a lot of those. A lot of those. Sounds about right. This is a knife spam deck. They're on lamb. Okay. Oh yeah, this actually might be uh, like Jamie's deck that's on Never DB. That's the case. I don't think they have a lot of money. Is Jamie's? Like, I think Jamie re reposted their newest uh, like knife runner deck. I don't know where it is. I saw it the other day. Yeah, there you go, Lamb. Okay, so Cortex Lock is now blank. Activist coming down is actually really good for us because they break this for seven and they liberated accounts up. So uh, self-destruct actually might just work here. Server one, server one, server one. None of these cards are that good. We're gonna go ahead and call event. May as well have something to ice archives? I don't know if we need to. And they're drawing up, which plays around this play. Like, this play is entirely based off of the self-destruct. And uh, we largely need now our data loops. This is actually really expensive for them no matter how it goes. I'll res for two. That seems fine. They're running glass click again. They haven't been respecting hardening news all game. I just saw Natty Ice. <laughs> That's what's deck name. That's pretty good. Are you ever going to do unboxing videos or reviews of the RNR or the champ cards? That'd be really cool, actually. Oh, yeah, shit, that's really cheap for them. Never mind. To make new sound. It doesn't say that they pay two credits when they use server. I really, that always gets me. It never says they use two credits. And none of our ice is over five strength, which is actually the biggest issue. Um, I don't know. I don't actually have plans to do that in Michigan, I'll be honest. It'd be really cool, though. So now they're going to be paying, like, three credits to make a run every turn. Uh, I'm going to res this. None of the cards are that great. That's the better one, for sure. So get a data loop. We didn't. So install advanced advance here. That's a problem with self-destruct. If it doesn't kill, it's actually really bad. So this is one damage. This is three damage. That's four damage. We definitely need to get this on the remote. Getting a lot of ice on the remote also makes things taxing just in general against Surfer. But they're probably just going to go on centrals. Um, what do we want to call? I don't know what their economy is. Their economy is really light. Uh, they're definitely on. They must have copies of, like, knifed. I think calling event is probably fine. They might just want to, like, pressure centrals with event. If we don't advance cards, I don't think there's a lot of reasons for them to have to run. I don't actually know if we want to fire Rashida here. Holy shit, now with, like, seven cards in hand. Dang. Mind you, these sort of, like, decks are, like, are really, uh... 
I don't want to say one dimensional, but like they they're hinging on spamming. This is the second knife deck we played. They get really good with uh the new uh what Mike Sheehan's card? Labor force, labor something. Okay, this is a one and four of being bad. No, we're good. Labor rights, thank you. Just running now for the 40 card deck. Yeah, that's largely what it is. It's just a 40 card deck. So these combo specific decks really want that. Like you want retrieval run Morningstar patchwork in your opening hand. Okay. The problem is they have too many cards in hand. It's 100% the problem. We could Tarmar knifed. Feel pretty good about that. No data loop yet, actually, which is the worst thing. Like, data loop makes the server almost always lethal. Oh, draw one. Okay. Knife. And they threw out another hacktivist. I don't think the hacktivists are that important. Um, we could actually just slow jam one of these cards. This card's actually pretty good. All their cards are really important. Just slow roll it. They might run HQ here, actually. I think they almost definitely run HQ. It cost them like three credits. Uh, we call knife, which is pretty good. I don't know what else we could possibly want to do. Jam? Jam is okay, but then we can't play Tarmar. I want only to jam, though. The problem is. Okay. It's happening. Emptied mind. And Guru Devinder? God fucking damn it. Of course we're playing Guru Devinder. Piss. We play a self destruct deck against Guru Devinder. Guru versus Kakugo is not that bad, though, because they only break this once, and they just, like, surf it down. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, Kakugo's only going to fire once, though. So, like, they only need four, eight, nine, ten. Oh, actually, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it will work out. Two self-destructs in the same server, though. It doesn't matter. Hopefully, they stim hack this. That would be, like, the best. We learned how that works now. We're prepared for that. Uh... Yeah, YOLO. So that actually, no, that's pretty expensive, right? This is uh, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Duggers. Shit. What are they in Savernius? That's a cool combo, right? Because they can draw ten and Savernius with this. This combo's nuts. If they're on Savernius stim implants, right? And they are on stim hack. Throw it two out. What? We found a loop. That's good. Is this if able? No. What? What's going on? I don't know what's happening. What? So they're going to start with five clicks. Actually, they're going to have six, six clicks. And they can duggers for four. I like Quantum Ninja. It seems like a cool ninja. It seems okay. This is going all right for them. And we like it so hard to win in this deck by scoring agendas. It's like way too hard. Way too difficult. This has to be on a remote server. Funny enough, we can put this on a naked server and if they run it, they basically lose four credits. We have to do a stupid trace though. Ah, oh, Christ. And the problem is if we put this on the outside, the Kakuga gets worse. God damn it, Guru Devinder. Duggar's okay. You have six clicks, I guess. Yeah, right? Jam? Jam does nothing. It's the safest place to put it, but like, ah, oh, man. Ah. <sighs> if they do install a Severnia Steam Implants, I'm going to be massively uh, surprised. And we actually haven't seen a restricted card, so they're probably on Levy. They did it. This deck is good. This is a cool deck. And now they can throw out their whole hand. Mind you, they're not on Obelisk, but they'll probably throw out all nine cards and access a bunch from RD. They're accessing all of HQ here. Oh, normal run. Okay, so they're going to Severnius and Nexus all of HQ. Do we know Ninja's restricted card? Almost 100% sure it has to be Levy at this point. But no, we don't. Click from both Beth and Empty Mind. Yeah, exactly. They got six clicks, so they do Duggars, and then they can run. So now they're accessing all of HQ. They have to be on Levy. They should throw this card out so they get an extra click. Unless this card's like insanely good. Uh, this, if we res, it costs them three credits. Doesn't seem that relevant. It's also 
This card's terrible when they have no cards in hand. Literally does nothing. So I think we're never going to res it. Yo, Jackson, what's up? There's a levy in the bin? Hell yeah, there is. Okay, cool. Don't have a lockdown. That'd be good. Yeah, definitely a good time to dub the SSL. Uh, the jam was right. And they also are going to go see our self-destruct, which nobody hesitates to trash that for zero. No jendies. That's correct. They saw an NGO front in hand. If we advance, advance, they just run it. They can always Duggars run it. Eat my ass, Duggars. And this does nothing against Duggars. Okay, maybe we have a tempo window at some point when they, uh... I wish we had, like, 10 fewer credits. 12 fewer credits. I w <laughs> When they levy, maybe? There's a window? Maybe when they levy? Literally all our ice is under 5 strength. Which only adds 3 credits to the server? What do we do? That means they run it if we do that. That means they run it. That can't be right. I wish you could install self-destruct on HQ. It'd be rad. Be so cheesy though. Nat just fired. That's cool, I guess. Duggars draw 10. They slam in R&D. How many fronts have they seen? They've seen two fronts. Is this the front three? Okay. So. We definitely don't want to play this because they're going to be throwing cards out. So. Kakugo, it actually matters here because it means they have to spend four. They have to spend four. They used Lamb to break this instead of Morningstar. That's technically a credit more than it needs to be. Solving Stealth Destruct on HQ is certainly not more powerful than installing Hard Help on HQ. Hard Help is insane. Oh, they figured that out. Yeah, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. All good. Are they listening to us? Paid for for Guru. So they're not repositioning it. So Surfer isn't firing. Uh, okay. I will res this. That's another three credits. Yeah, why doesn't it say they pay two credits? That needs to be changed on JNA. Every other ability says the cost associated. Maybe we should have considered that. No, that was actually probably the best dice. They're only on two credits again. Hold on. Thinking. We could nuke the whole server. To make them lose Guru Devinder. Before they levy. No, that's, not, that's definitely not right. There's no way that's right. We need a top deck and agenda. Yeah, there's no way that's correct. Oh, boy. How much influence have we seen? This is three. <laughs> Guru's one. This is Levy. That's so uh, that's six. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. And they have a levy in hand. Yeah, they have to have a levy in hand. Top deck and agenda. This card is not relevant. All their ice is irrelevant. Literally. Oh, that's actually pretty good. And if this is a hive mind, they have to run it. We also have a preemptive. Are we drawing last click? Oh, why am I doing this to myself? Yeah, we are. Uh, expecting the levy. Mind you, they have 16 credits stored off on here. It's, it's so hard to win. Guru Devinder really just kind of grinding everything to a halt. Don't see that card too often. The only game we're going to win with this one is in the competitive lobby. That's where we got our real teeth. Levy played from hand. Uh, we're still over 15, so they can always still Duggars run this. Also, the current is cleared, which sort of matters. Hey, Andre, is this deck of the week? Uh, definitely not, no. Uh, we did play it. How's it going, Kurtz? Okay, self-destruct. Don't think it's going to work in this matchup. This, probably have to jam it. Duggars doesn't matter. Uh, if they have a guinea pig in hand, they get like 300 credits. And then they can contest this remote. I literally don't think we have a way of win unless we can jam two agendas two turns in a row. 
There's actually not a lot of good targets to shuffle away here. I think you'd shuffle away the Liberated and the Beth, probably. Maybe the Guru, if you're real comfortable with yourself. Okay, what's good? This is terrible. They have full MU. Uh, This, they break for... It's really cool if it fires. I don't think it's ever going to fire. Preemptive is good. IPO might actually matter at some point. I like this card better than the new sound. If they surpass Kakagu, do they pass it? I don't know. No. It's currently being encountered now, so they can surpass this. I don't know why they didn't before. It was weird. It's all the same encounter, yeah. They're duggersing to 10. Are they running as remote with 15 cards in hand? Again, Kamainu doesn't matter because <laughs> they break all subs for one. Are they just going to access all of R&D? Which actually might win. Like, if they run R&D, maybe they do win the game. That's actually pretty likely. If they access all R&D, they see 8 cards at 11. It's very likely that they win. There's two agendas. They have to hit both agendas in R&D. That's actually the rest. Oh, no, there's 16 cards here. Sorry, I thought this was their stack. It's their empty heap. Like a serve a different ice past it, swap the ice. They're doing it. They're only accessing six cards. I guess they're respecting snare, but they don't need to. Um, okay, wow. If this doesn't work, we win. If they literally whiff, if they see seven cards, if the bottom three, if one of the bottom uh, four cards is an agenda, we win the game. So not favored. Literally what we res here doesn't matter. They don't need money to steal our agendas, unless I'm ma making it goofing up. Why on earth could possibly top big rig versus the biggest rig? Uh, we have a net damage lethal uh, deck. Okay, we got a one, two, three. Good. No, they're thinking. Fuck. Okay. So it just is a one in the bottom seven. One in the bottom seven. Let's go. One in the bottom seven. Oh, we win the game. Wow. And they found her last NGO front, which is definitely the worst part of that run emotionally, because now they know this is the agenda. Oh, that was pretty risky. Good game. I don't know why they didn't see an extra card. Let's see if that mattered. No, it was in the bottom three. Oh, we were good. We were actually good. No self-destruct. Nope, but they had the tech. They had so much tech. It's insane. Thank you. I dig your deck. Um, they had so much tech, it's like absolutely nuts. Like the fact that they had Doggers and uh, Guru, which you have to, like if they're playing with no cards in my hand, it's really cool. This card's actually super underrated. It had like a minimal showing in like some niche decks at Worlds last year, and it's actually one of the better R&D multi-access cards. Like this combo is worth looking into. Needs more Doggers and Severinius, I think. That actually makes the Beth hustle so much more reasonable. If we see Beth, we probably should consider Duggers, but no, actually that doesn't make, it's not like an easy call. Any turn they don't jam, they Severnius. Yeah, right? Like, after we fire Rashida, they just re Severnius HQ. Yeah, I think you're right. We have to jam. How much did it pain you to actually have to win by scoring agendas? That was real hard. Like, that was a lot of agendas we, we pushed through this remote. Actually, no, I think we lost one off of R&D or something. Hey, cheers. That's very kind. See you around, eh? It's a cool deck. Okay, did we... How did you play Guru versus Obakata, though? Uh... That didn't come up. Oh, how do you play Guru versus Obakata? Oh, you can't steal, can you? Oh, they shuffled Guru back. So Guru says that you prevent the damage whenever you take it, which means you literally can't steal Obakata. But it's not like this deck can steal Obakata anyways, so I don't think it does anything. Like, it just kind of... Two negatives cancel. Yeah, you're right. You can't steal Obakata. That's pretty wild. Huh. Oh, that's crazy. Check that out. You're just tuning in. Welcome. How's it going? Thanks for dropping by. I think we're going to jam another of this game, a deck. I don't know if we've learned how we can make it better. Actually, probably just not playing garbage ice. Like, literally, any of the cool ice besides Cortex Lock never fired. Make it Acme first. That's Mari Money has been like incredible. It's literally been incredible. We have made so much as Mari Money that I don't, I'm not excited for the Acme. Smoke. Yeah, it sounds good. Hey. All right, 40 cards. 
not that much card draw. Generally three diesels. And then you can always draw mid-run with a Netmarker. Got the real cheesy opening. Always happy to see that. We want to get ice on uh, R&D. Um, let's see if this does anything. And then we can put ice on our remote server. Generally, you want to ice up R&D against Shapers. They have indexing turn one. Uh, it might be a bit harder against NBM. Um, what events are they on? They're on Diesel. Some of them are on Deuces Wild. It's not that common. Resources, they don't have that many setup resources. Uh, did they mulligan? They kept. I'll try event. Might not be good. At least change the ice. I think changing the ice probably wasn't wrong. Paragon coming down turn one. So they're not respecting hard hitting news unless they do have access to uh, the other thing, to uh, misdirection. Seeing the new sound. Peace. Yeah, some of the are in peace. You're right. It's not that popular. I don't think it was like the deck, the card that was in. Uh, they also didn't play a lot. Like that was a really bad turn into misdirection. Um, oh, mind you, this is actually really good right now. I'm a simple man. I'm a really simple man. Uh, we have a kill server. Uh, I, I forget what I was going to say. I totally forget. Running archives just to get a credit and to scry their deck. Look at the top card. Um, it's not bad. Again, if they didn't get hard hitting these last turn, they might not this turn. This is basically looking like a Rashida. I don't think they'll charge until they have breakers. Sec testing coming down is pretty brutal. And the code means uh, bad things for us, too. So Newshound doesn't do anything but trace three matters. I think that's the perfect dice for Archives. And that means they're going to start poking, which is actually really good for us. I think we're a bit short on credits. Rashida for the remote would be the best. And Solve Double Advance actually really soon, specifically after they pop their, uh, their self-modifying code, seems pretty good. Uh, the biggest issue is Cortex Lock. Do we do Install Single Advance? No, we need to ice up Archives for sure. Otherwise, he's going to lose three credits. They're going to give them three credits a turn. We have to actually consider resing all this ice, which is going to be pretty difficult. Do you have a kill screen coming up? I'd hope so. Find that mythical kill screen. This deck is probably better in Jinteki, but... Self-destruct seems really good in Jinteki. Sec testing on HQ. Q-Ban coming down. Fuck him, we res the Neural, right? Hell yeah, we res the Neural. Let's go. Neural Katana. Three net damage. Come with your Sentry Breaker. That's really bad for Cortex Lock. But that's going to cost them generally two credits. Which is free. <laughs> Mm, lol, I see you found the Neural Katana. Dagger. Literally can't afford it. Oh, no, they can't. No, they can't. It fires. We traded three net for two. Oh, and there's the, the, the diesel that they probably had in their hands since turn one. Is there a window after an ice fires to use self-destruct before they jack out? Yeah. There is. Katana beats Dagger. That it does! Well noted. That's a bigger sword. They get two credits when they pass it, though. Three credits. Fuck, they got like five credits off of that. I, um, we came out on top. Don't worry about it. Now we don't have enough trace money, but the Rashida might actually help. I think we have to do it. Uh, event probably the best. We could call Heart a program. But then, like, it's worse if they play Gamble into Run. So Dagger is 3, 4, 5. The 1 to boost, 1 to break, so it's 6. I think we're still going to call Event. They still have 3 Gambles. <laughs> For now, at least. Yeah, it's going to be bad eventually. They're sec testing HQ again. They're going in on it. So this still breaks out even this turn. We do have the SSL, obviously, in here, which is the worst hit. And I didn't actually, oh, they don't actually see a card, so never mind, we're, we're cool. Yeah, we're good. Man, we probably want to trash this card. Program for sure? Yeah, maybe. I didn't consider that they would, like, rush HQ that much. I thought they'd poke other servers. Maybe they're a bit scared because they saw the neural. Refractor coming down, too. Uh, best card is Data Loop. Data loop might do some work here. Okay, they're generally pretty bad against barriers. We're going to go trash that. Put that on HQ. Generally, you want to run HQ. Now, the issue is if they run the Rashida here, uh, this is two to break. Not very good. This is three damage. If they install a card and run this, they die. That's like the ideal situation. 
So let's make the ideal situation. I think they have Poke Central here just to, to get a res off. And they only have, like, programs left in their deck. They have a couple. Clone Chip means they can Clone Chip SMC. Clone Chip for Cuban seems more reasonable. The IP block now is, becomes a Trace 3 plus 2. Uh, I think we definitely need to res this. And we can always trash install over it with, like, the Kakago. The Kakago is, like, a real threat. Kakago on the remote server is even better. We have two agendas in here. Luckily, they keep putting security testing on HQ for some reason. Like, if we go to red and anything, I guess maybe, I don't know. Now it knows. It shows that they need with the deed. And, yeah, we can, we can kill them. Trace 3. So they're going to get three credits back, so this is basically a two-credit run. They have access to two S self-modifying codes. And they technically broke even. So we're going to jam this turn for sure. They have too few cards in hand. Nemecur coming down, always really good. Maybe that was actually the wrong time to jam. That was, we should, yeah, I guess we trashed Rashida either way, anyway. Uh, this card's now crap. I like the SSL money more than anything. So it looks like the kind of game where we're going to actually have to score out, which is pretty rough. And we have so many agendas. We have so many agendas. New Sound is not the best against their deck. This card's good, this card's good. It might be heresy to throw out a self-destruct. That'd be heresy, right? I think we need to though. We have a preemptive. We'll figure this out. Paragon Smoke still seems like a mean. It's a good deck. I just don't know if it's like perfect for the meta right now, but any deck that just decides to score behind ice, it's one of the best ones. It's not amazing against controlling the message. I think that's one of the huge issues. Uh, they're on archives right now. We res this new sound. Still pretty good. We're going to be able to hopefully recover with SSL. We just always make sure we have to keep money on top of them. Throw out a degree mill to shuffle. I mean, we can't afford to do that. I feel like self destruct would be 100% better out of Mati. I think you might be right to some extent about the Jinteki. Man, Cuban's so good. Against the, the, this deck might be strictly better. The free extra trace doesn't matter. Like, I don't want to install an ice just to get an extra credit off of the trace. Like, that's terrible. Consider that Acme just gives us two credits. Okay, so now they have more money than us. So this is clone chip one. Man, Cuban's so good. They see you self-destruct. Cat is out of the bag. Uh-oh. I'm out of water, too. That's a bigger uh-oh, I'll be honest. And <laughs> as soon as they see the self-destruct, they draw up by two. Yeah, this is a liability. They break this for free. Even more, they break this for one credit. No, they break this for free. This is basically run game five. No, game, game five. Smoke. Smoke is okay. Smoke 40 card deck, though. The Kakago seem okay. Uh, I don't think they run archive and check for a while, so the degree mill in there seems okay. Uh, IPO, we can play in next turn in theory if we need to. Uh, preemptive action probably isn't the best here. None of these cards are amazing, besides, I guess, Rashida. No, I think the preemptive is actually worse. Kakagos are super important, as is money. Biotech's also good. I think there's a lot of good options here. Um, I don't think our deck is tuned yet. Like, we need maybe something more aggressive that makes them run. Like, there's a chance, actually, if we just played NEH and jam Cortex Lock into the super cheesy uh, self-destruct, we'd have, like, a good deck. Because, mind you, this is what's wild about this card. And you don't see this. Um, hold on. Give us one second. And call event, I guess. So, on alone, this card is trace zero to do three net damage, which means if you have more money than them, it's just a trap that does three net damage. And a lot of times you pay four credits to do that with snare. So, if people are, and yeah, admittedly, it fires on RD and HQ, which makes a, a big part of the strength. But, like, if you're playing an asset spam deck that does net damage and you have money, this card is not terrible. Not the worst. Again, not amazing. Because it doesn't fire off centrals and it's, you got to spend more money than the runner. But, like, eh, consider it, right? Inti coming down. That's really good. That's a terrible barrier breaker against the ice we have. Actually, besides Kakugo, it's pretty good against Kakugo. I can't afford the waiver. Again, they break waiver for two credits, though, so I don't think we ever res it. Oh, shit. That's a lot of money. <laughs> they didn't see the waiver, luckily. Uh, all right, so we're just going to play a game where they have in infinite money. Yeah, Junebug for extra kill options is probably not unreasonable. 
Like, here if we jammed a June bug, they'd probably run it. The fact that also we don't have any other backup threats, like we're not playing hard any news, obviously makes the deck a fair bit worse. And even if we play like self-destruct in Jinteki and we don't get a kill, like just having two neurals in hand or neural archive neurals sometimes will close the game out. Like I think this is definitely makes a lot more sense in Jinteki. And this card is actually probably pretty playable. Um, okay. So central pressure is going to be an issue. Indexing is online, considering we didn't res this. I don't think we ever res this. So our turn is play these two, which means we can draw once. That might actually be worth playing, but not, there's no good shuffle here besides the inti. So I don't think we strictly need to. I'll just take 300 credits. Uh, again, events, they've been holding them in hand. We're playing around two diesels, three sure gambles. Uh, restricted card is either Film Critic, which is a problem with this card, or Strike. I assume Film Critic. And then Gambles. I'm just going to keep calling events. There's no other resources they need. They might be on one copy of Ghost Runner. In terms of programs, they have cloaks left over. It's the problem with stealth and playing on JNet. It's like actually literally, it's pretty tedious. There's a lot of things to click. click. And when you play this on in person, you just like throw your counters around. There's a small chance there on Patron. I really doubt it. And they're running HQ. Seems like a good run here. Uh, we're just going to go for the Trace, which once they have that much money, makes a lot of sense. Unless they run last click. Then we can maybe trash this. The only problem with SD and Jinteki is that you'll run a double advance card with at least four cards in hand. Yeah, you always do. Hit the Kakugo. That's spicy. Probably get that on HQ after. Oh, this is what a Kakugo looks like. You can break it out for one credit taking that damage. Feel okay about that. Maybe they want to be scared of Snare, considering they've seen this part of our deck so far. Yeah, that's 100% the problem. Oh, they lost a Diesel. Is that uh, in Jinteki, you respect net damage more when you run. And they're using Netmarker to draw. It's very really good. And they trashed NGO front, which sucks. And wow, wow, that's real bad for us. That's so bad for us. Holy shit, give us a data loop. And like 300 credits. The credits actually worked out. Notoriety is really bad for us because now they're on game point. So this advance advance looks terrible, but they just trashed an NGO front and this looks like this looks like shenanigans. Man, if we had a Kakugo on this remote, it actually might be okay. That sucks. If we have a Kakugo on the remote, we might get a lethal. They're drawing up. June bug or no June bug. Mind you, they, they don't really have a reason to interact with us. We're only on three points. Five cards in hand. Emmerker boosting. Going to use the dagger. Free credit, free credit. Break, break. Gain two, gain three. Scry your deck. It's going to be rough. Paragon, pretty good card. Still haven't explored the Lamprey Lock, but the Lamprey Lock deck might be real. Incredibly, we could have just jammed an agenda. Again, I am terrible with NGO front, and every time this happens to me, I get upset. This is fine. Everything is fine now. All right. So I think we're going to go ahead and attitude adjustment these away. I'm just going to put them. Oh, we draw the other one. That's fine. They're all in R&D now, according to them. We're going to draw once. We're going to draw a degree mill. Very good. And we're going to put an ice on R&D, so it's hard to get in there. They only have 24 cards left. It's going to be a bit of a grind, but I believe in us. Oh, boy. Clone ship coming down. Doesn't mean that much, actually. Get some Cubana if they want to reposition it. And all of these decks run that damage protection. Generally, when people are prepping for worlds with their smoke decks, they just didn't do it. This deck might not have enough money to support that sort of thing. But, man, this is a server. If we have a data loop on server one, there's actually a small chance we win the game. Oh, there's a ghost runner. They have those. Three Tarmar. Burning a hole in our pocket. It's not actually what that expression means, is it? So what's our plan? If we want to jam this, they can run it. Again, it doesn't matter if they're on game point, so this doesn't actually matter at any more. I don't think there's a real reason to install it. Uh, any agenda wins, right? We're clearly trying to do an end damage. This might not have been correct. This helps a bit. Shouldn't it be on two unused MU? Yeah, Cubon. Yeah. 
I've seen some players do that back in the day. I did this with Kaisa a lot. Is I kept my Kaisas on my side of the table and then just had chess pieces and put them on their side of the table. Because you see a lot of people back in the day that would goof up their MU because Parasite would be on the other side of the table. Kaisa, stuff like that. If we draw, they run HQ. Man, this ice never fired all day. And that's part of this that makes me the most upset. There's no good ice to put here besides IP block. I think we time our indexing, but that doesn't even matter. Fuck it. They also have probably three more influence than we think. Mind you, this deck doesn't seem that it is on, uh, it doesn't look entirely to be on, uh, Paperclip, they might just be on Inti and then uh, Atman if they need to deal with stuff, bigger stuff. Uh, maybe even Blackstone, and that means they probably actually have two copies of Sec Testing because that frees up three influence. I've even seen some versions that are on Find the Truth, which is pretty good if you play RNG key because then like the value of running RNG is insane or HQ. Even if they have extra influence, like why don't they play? Oh, they're actually running here. They could also just like go ahead and play. Uh, uh, HQ interface or the one that makes them access to. Damn, Andre, you always stream on Thursdays when my local group plays. Game is dead, still all the Netrunners at the same time. <laughs> How's it going, Sorcery? Hopefully you had a good Netrunner night. Uh, we do here in Montreal on Mondays, so not at all an issue. Uh, a lot of people were playing tonight. There was like 30 when we started. Ah, beans. Five cards in hand. This will put them down to four. Two data loops in the bottom 14. And they're going to start running HQ real soon. If we don't res this, oh wait, uh oh, what's up? Sorry, sorry. Oh sure. Oh, because they have to break two separate teams. So what we did was smart. Into a dedicated processor and stealth doesn't sound half bad. Yeah, it's just slots at that point. Like, it might be better just playing Inti Blackstone. Blackstone, I actually think, lines up poorly against IP block as well. Oh, uh, found it. Mm, damn, we're good. Now it's going to come down to credits. Okay, so we have the kill server. We just don't have the credits. What burst decon card to get played? We play stim hack. That's largely it. I actually just found out one of the people in my group has gone to worlds and is part of Nisei now, which is pretty dope. Oh, hey, which person? What part? What parts are you from? Yeah, I think we're bone at this point. The thing is, oh, they did play gamble. We got four. We got two. I think they're contesting. Make contest a remote. The thing is, if they run this, like this puts two cards back. This does one card. If they run this, and we have more money than them, which we don't, uh, we win. Oh, it's going to come down to actually... Oh, no, wait. They have a billion credits because of Netmerker. Shit. We actually built the kill server. We just don't have enough credits. Oh, that might be an issue. No, this is good. We got this. Okay. This is a problem, right? Because they have seven more credits here, which they can use for this trace. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that trace. So they can pay three credits, which is better than Inti. They kind of considered just breaking with Inti. Seven. It's only four more credits. I guess if we spend all our money, it's pretty good for them. Waver. Tarmar. Waver. Damn, we're good. Two cards in hand. Shit. Shit. Ghost Runner 2? They can't use Ghost Runner. Oh, yeah, it's during a run. Yeah, you can't remember. I believe their name is Jamie. They're the assistant rules manager. I live in Boston. Oh, super cool. They took Nasir to Worlds, which is badass. Oh, I think I saw them play. I think I saw them play. There's a Nasir next to me at like table, like a top table round two. I'm pretty sure they might have been the only Nasir there. I think I saw them. This is only for what? Yeah, it's during a run. They could use it. Actually, is self-destruct considered during a run because the run ends? I don't think you can. Okay. Problem here is this is seven to res and then we lose that exchange real bad. They have to break it though. That's kind of cool. Okay, math would have to be done at this point. And this actually doesn't help us. This, we don't win the game with this one, so even that's not fantastic. Um, 
This has a slightly cheesy win. I think this is technically worse. What are we saying about Jamie? Oh, someone from YouTube uh, just played with them tonight. They didn't realize they were playing Nisei. Diesel, gain two credits. Oh, yeah, the Diesel makes this not a winning play, so. It's been good knowing y'all. Really good knowing y'all. Uh, Going to go ahead and hope they think it's a June bug. Just gonna go for that June bug bluff. Part of the Cambridge crowd. Oh, cool. Just they're thinking about it. This is the good old uh, June bug play. Yeah. I forgot you have two chats. Do you prefer YouTube or Twitch? It makes no difference to me. It's a different crowd on each. Oh, if you click on it. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't make a preference. All right, two cards from Stack. Jackson, what's up? They can draw with Nightmare Curve if they want. I think you're just boned. Yeah, I think we're just boned. They got to think it's a June bug, which does four. Now, they still have to break this. That's just some credits. They only have to break one of the subs. Acme. Acme tax. Let's go. Inti. Seven credits. All right. Okay. So, June bug still isn't lethal. Because they can draw one. First time. Place one guy. Draw a card. Oh, yep. We are now bluffing. They lost a stim hack. Always a shame. What a server. I can't believe stim hack doesn't do what we think it does. Okay, hold the phone. If they stim hack the server, how fucking beautiful it would be. No matter what, they don't win this run, right? Because we just self destructed. Literally, no matter what. So the question is, we have to res things that cost them more money than it costs us money. Which means they have to. They have to not trace through this. Uh, oh, fuck. Inti costs shit. Okay, we're down a credit. Shit. <laughs> so good about that. Turned out not to be bad to boost this. Uh, no. So we pay two here, they pay nothing. So we're going to go ahead and say Axis. And you're right. If they did respect Junebug, they should have drawn with Nemaker. Hmm. Now we have to bluff. That's not how that works. Oh, yeah, it is. Never mind. Okay. All right. And res this. Okay. So. No longer during a run. But. We don't have any money. If we spend all our money. They spend all their money. We're basically trading 15. For yeah, let's just see what happens. There's no way we win. There's no way we win. Shouldn't res that IP block. We'd have one more credit on this. It's impossible for us to win this game. Unless they run this, this they let this fire. And then they run this somehow. You didn't even spend all that? What are you kidding me? Of course we did have to spend all that. 100% we spent all of that. Look, they're on four credits. We're so good. They make money so easily. Also, if we install this naked, they just suck testing it. Yeah, we need to play this in, in red and play in early MP. This card's actually reasonable. I like this card. It's a good card. If they stim hack the remote, actually no, we'd still lose a trace, so that's probably fine. Uh Yeah, not a lot of plays going on here, you know? Not a lot of plays. Very few plays. He's just gonna uh, probably hit that concede button. Woof. GG. Did not have a chance. Not enough money. If we had the data loop earlier, thanks for the game, eh? If we had a data loop earlier, we probably had a chance. But they played well. Like they they dieseled around it. Like they, they did a good job. No matter what, we lose this turn because they just run archives. So that concession there doesn't seem that rude. See you around, eh? Okay. Twenty five percent win rate. But in the competitive lobby against Eric George, that's what matters the most. We <laughs> stim hack 
fires the brain damage before the three net damage, which I think is the most important thing we learned. Uh, it's 11.23 right now. Unfortunately, I have to actually wake up way earlier than normal. Uh, tomorrow we have to do some stuff that involves Paris HQ, which they're five hours in the future. So I got to gotta call it a night a bit earlier than before. Thanks so much for dropping by. Uh, again, huge news, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I know. This is a cool thing to do. Check out our Netrunner. Uh, Nisei, if you want to run tournaments in uh, in your area, which I highly recommend you to do, their, their prize support and well, just their support in general is pretty great, uh, fill out a form just so they know what they need to deal with. I don't think you've agreed to anything here, but uh, yeah, maybe check that out. You can find it on our Netrunner. Maybe you can probably find it up on Stimhack as well. Uh, that's largely it. Uh, enjoy Fortnite Season 6, but also Magic came out today. Maybe you try that online. I don't know. We'll figure out how Magic goes. Thanks so much to all the people we played against, all the people in chat. I saw a lot of new names and faces, I guess, technically. Just give me a second to unwind. Uh, I think we can make this deck better. I think there's definitely a possibility that we can make it better. Just jam Cortex Lock in every deck, right? Like, what's the chance that the best way to make this deck better is put in HB and just play three Cortex Lock and self-destruct and just, like, literally destroy everything? I guess what people do, turn one against Mitzi, right? They'd run, and you'd be like, oh, that's a Rashida running, and you'd be like, Cortex Lock. <laughs> Anywho, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week, Thursday, same time, same place. If you want to subscribe or uh, follow the channel on YouTube or Twitch, I guess, respectively, you get updates if we stream at other weird times. Maybe we'll stream this weekend. I actually don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll try that. It'll be fun. Thanks so much for watching. Ciao.